What's going on, brothers and sisters? I'm Professor Spira, and welcome to Professor Spira's Office Hours. <clears throat> and uh, <laughs> last week, we had some uh, technical issues, uh, and I, eventually I'm going to get a chance to go back and actually re-record that. I'll just re-record it fresh, because uh, a lot of those questions were good, and um, the folks that hung in there, you know, Brother Air said that he really liked uh, that he liked that that live clip and he kind of watched it through but the replay of it the buffering was was off but uh so i've reset things up hopefully uh everything goes smooth today looks like i have a pretty strong uh stream and i reconfigured things and so hopefully we will be cool so a lot of stuff going on uh, if you are s subscribed to the mucus free life uh, insiders club or follow me on facebook or anything like that then you've probably seen uh you know a lot a lot of activity over the past week a couple things that went down uh the early had the uh, the early bird access and early bird pricing for the uh, for the e-course for the uh, mucusless uh diet healing system e-course and uh what i'm going to do the 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 early bird access code kind of shut off yesterday but I'm opening it up just for a few more hours so if you're checking this out and you want to take advantage of uh, be one of the first people to go through the mucus diet healing system e-course and also uh, have a few perks that won't be available in the future then uh, I would say go ahead and take advantage of this it's, it's not you're not gonna be able to ac ever access the e-course cheaper than this uh, it's over almost 78 uh, percent off and um, so there's a, a link down below uh, in the description that you can check out uh, if you are interested in taking advantage of that. And uh, for some reason you can't find or something, send me an email. But uh, that's something that you want to do if you are at all interested in the e-course. Uh, there's a, we already have a there's a lot of a lot of folks have already signed up and uh, got got a lot of uh, positive. Uh, uh, some, some quite positive feedback thus far and uh, in fact let me uh, let me show the uh, <clears throat> so this this was emailed out but I'll, I'll show it to you real quick here so this is the early bird pricing uh, set 78 percent off what the e-course will eventually be so I'm gonna I'm a keep this what what you do is uh, Let's see, there's an early bird. When you, you click the link and you go through and you hit uh, type in early bird just like that, and uh, then, you can, then, then you can get the, uh, get the discount. And uh, this was some nice, there's more, more talking now, but this was a very, some, some kind things being said in the forum about the e-course about the e uh, that I featured there. So, um, so yeah, so that's going to be uh, you know, really excited about that. I think uh, with this this early bird crew, uh, I'm gonna start I'm gonna try to set up a meeting next week for our, our first meeting, and if not, then the following week. But I'm what I want to do with the early bird folks is actually get together online in kind of a classroom setting and just have dialogue about the e-course. I'll field any questions that come up. Uh, and that's going to be something that'll be exclusive for the people that get in on this early bird access. So uh, definitely recommend uh, taking advantage of that if you are uh, at all interested. And uh, let's see, next, uh, next item on the list is we have uh, officially the Professor Arnold Errett Day celebration, first annual. It's going to be Saturday, July 28th. Uh, and that's going to be the main, that's the main day, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Sunday, July 29th. And this is in Columbus, Ohio, and it's actually going to be at my home. And I have a nice size backyard, so we're going to go back there, have it set up, uh, and have some fun in the backyard here. And <clears throat> have a nice list of of uh, some speakers. Uh, you know, I'm gonna speak, Brother Air, uh, Sister Takoa, uh, Danielle Miranda as well as uh, Renee Henry. And let me bring up the... Oh, here we go. 
want to bring up the uh, this is the the schedule so we saturday we kick kick it off <clears throat> 11 o'clock then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my talk advanced mucus free mindset then uh danielle miranda is going to do uh talk about mucus free fitness you know if you've seen any of the videos about danielle you know she's just a a, a world-renowned ath uh, uh, athlete, just a whole, whole other level of athleticism. And there's a lot of people that are concerned about their muscles and athletics and being able to leap tall buildings in a single bound and stuff while practicing the diet. And, uh, and she is one of the people that you definitely want to talk to about that type of interest because um, I'm kind of, <clears throat> my, my, in my interests are kind of, I, I, I like to see a lot of intellectual Supermanism, you know, so which I don't see enough of. But if that makes any sense, you know, I like seeing people, you know, read a 300 page book in a couple hours, you know, and, and, and really get it. You know, that those are the things that interest me in terms of extraordinary feats of human achievement. Uh, but I know, you know, in the diet world, in the physical world, a lot of people are truly interested in. Uh, this you know high, high level of the athleticism and stuff and so Danielle's gonna cover that uh, very well and we got uh, sister Takoa Tafari who is uh, probably one of the longest practice practitioners in the mucus diet healing system that I know of you know pr over 40 years of practicing and uh, she's very humble about it and it's hard to get her to <laughs> to, to really s to, to say if you ask her how long she's been practicing she might tell you that she's been practicing for a year or something you know she just really like she like act like she's just now getting the hang of it but she's uh practicing on a high level for a long time and she plays uh uh she's a per percussionist a yoga uh a, a practitioner and uh and raised children practice uh, on the mucus diet healing system and so she's going to have a talk about that and also demonstrate some of her some of her yoga then brother air coming on the art of fasting what else you expect from, uh, from brother air that's that's going to be uh you know that's going to be exciting to see what 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 nuggets are is he going to impart to us on this one because he always likes to to talk about and do something that he's never done before you know and these kind of things so he's so he's gonna do something or say something that you won't find on any other videos or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> then we'll have a little social, socialized period, which is a big part of this. We want to come together with that community and 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 have us all kind of you know get a chance to talk and just hang out and chill. Um, then we're gonna do a little panel discussion with me, brother Aaron Takoa. And uh, the question, and this is kind of my question, why do people not give Eric the credit he deserves? That's uh, it's a lot of stuff happening out there in the raw food world and the vegan world and all this stuff. And a lot of people that are using Eric's methods and concepts, uh, but they, for some reason, a lot of them are uncomfortable, you know, speaking his name and giving credit where credit is due. And so, that's a discussion that I that I would like to have uh, have the panel, and we're also going to have a little Q and A session. So if people have questions for the three of us that are, uh, especially some controversial. That this is the time where we're going to get into some controversial stuff, and so uh, that's that's what I like panels for. You just get in, get into it, <laughs> just get into that controversial stuff. Um, then we're going to have a meal. Uh, period and uh, oh no before that we got uh, dancing Eric's exercises with Renee Henry uh, she's gonna do a, a dance kind of interactive dance demonstration and uh, based on Eric's exercises and so if you've been on the channel you've seen uh, Danielle uh, Miranda has did a uh, demonstration of Eric's exercises and then Renee is going to to create she's kind of create a dance based on them and it'll be interactive uh, fun activity then uh, we have, have just kind of a little break period, socialize, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll have some kind of something going on in the background. I was thinking maybe play a little Immortality Pipeline, radio, old, our old radio show, uh, play a little bit of that there. Uh, then we are going to have the Arnold Eretz Celebration Band. And this is me, Brother Air, uh, uh, Eddie Brookshire, bass player from the uh, Breath Aaron Ensemble, our other band. And then uh, Dean Marcellana on piano, and we're gonna 
go at it and do what we do because we're musicians, you know, we're jazz musicians, that, that's our thing, <laughs> you know, that's our extraordinary uh, where we all come from. Uh, you know, I'm going to make some closing statements to the official kind of formal part of the engagement and then uh, from 8 o'clock to about 11 we're just going to kind of have an informal hangout session. I got a little, little, put a little fire back there, got a little fire pit and uh, we'll kind of maybe go around the, the circle and people can share their testimonials and ask questions. We have a little round table discussion, meet and greet, you know, just th that whole thing. Sunday it's kind of a free form day. We're going where the intendee, everybody along with you know, me, brother Eric Takora, everybody else is going to get together and we're going to kind of just decide what we want to do. So it's going to be more informal, but whatever is going to be is going to be fun. Uh, you know, we've talked about uh, you know, I got a real nice park forest area behind my house talking about maybe going on a walk and just hanging out back there. We could go to a supermarket and kind of have a, a demonstration of how we you know, kind of the, the mucus free mindset of walking into the supermarket and just how we think about it. You know, it's, it's like a whole different, <clears throat> it's like Neo in the Matrix or something, you know, and I <laughs> go into the supermarket, it's like just a whole, I, it's way different than it used to be, you know, growing up. And most people don't have that type of discerning immediate analysis as you walk through and, and, and really interrogating what's going on. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the uh, Arnold Eric celebration day, and uh, if you are interested in, in being a part of it, if you can, I know it's short notice. You know, we we've been talking about it for a while, try to get it together, but uh, and it took us kind of a minute to to hook it up. But if you're interested, check out the link below. Uh, we have the um, uh, there's a link to the um, this this page where you can decide what you want we got two different options you have there's a faster's ticket which is a cheaper ticket so and you wouldn't get like the meal say you're you're on a fast and so you're not interested in the food that we options that we have out there or fresh juice so basically going to have some fruit and then a uh, uh, little salad and your brother air is going to make brother air salad and uh, then we'll have some fresh juice. I have a couple juices going and we'll, we'll go ahead and set that up. Uh, but if you don't want any of that and you, maybe you want to bring your own stuff or just, you know, you're into your own thing, get the fastest ticket. And that's, some, that's going to be something unique for this because I've always liked that option for events because I like bringing my own stuff to most things because <laughs> most of the time I'm on my own schedule on my own little diet thing so even if I was going to something like a raw vegan something or other or whatever I, there's no guarantee that they're gonna have what I want there and so I like to bring my own stuff um, so that option is literally would be for me I would just be like cool fast fast ticket but if you want to experience brother air salad made by brother air uh, we also gonna have some watermelon and some, like I said, the fresh juice, and we'll probably throw some other stuff in there. Uh, the transition meal ticket will be uh, what you want to do, so you can kind of have full access to everything. But you, uh, you go here and you just click. Uh, obviously, you know how to do this. Just click through, add to cart, and move on through, and you will get get your ticket. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm checking the live live stream seeing what's what's happening over here with the with the folks I appreciate all you guys plugging in and I'm if you guys have any questions for the live stream and you put it down there you know I usually try to come at the end I take a break and then come back for another half an hour and you know try to skim through and, and hit some of those questions um, so uh, so yeah but a lot of a lot of fun stuff happening uh, but that's that's the big thing the e drop dropping of the e-course and then got the Eric Day celebration coming up which was uh, uh, you know brother Eric really really lobbied for this he really really wanted it and uh, we had talked about it for a while and uh, and and it's just you know these these events are a lot of work and stuff so sometimes I was kind of like I don't know are we are we ready to do it and then we're just like all right let, let's let's do it and we, let's just, you know, just open it up and see who, who's able to make it out. 
And uh, so um, I'm looking forward and uh, we're being positive. Uh, Takora is putting, put it out there <laughs> in the universe. We're gonna have good weather, so it's, it's just is. It's gonna be good. Because uh, Takora put it out there, so. So that's uh, so that's fun. Um, so what else is going on? Uh, maybe I get to uh, get to a couple of these questions here, and we'll get get started with the uh, with my uh, the questions. So as I've been doing, I throw some of these questions. Now, if you have a, if you have a question you'd like for me to cover during this portion of the, uh, of the show, then find the link down below and, uh, you can <clears throat> submit your question and, you know, I comb through them and I try to cover most of them. You know, I, I don't deal with questions that get too detailed into somebody's personal situation. Cause, uh, you know, I don't, if, if I don't have enough data, uh, and then I can't really respond the way that I would feel comfortable responding. And also, to me, you know, YouTube is not, this isn't the best space for that. And I know there's other people that do, that do that and there's real kind of intense case studies. I like to do that kind of thing a little bit more private because what I find is that uh, people misconstrue things and they, and they misappropriate ideas and it's just not, when, when you start to get real detailed like that, when you go beyond the general information, uh, there, there can be issues. Not that, uh, and I'm not necessarily criticizing anybody that does that. I'm just saying for me and within the context of the mucus free community and mucus's diet, I like to, uh, you know, I don't like to give out general prescriptions for, you know, and say that, okay, do, do, do this or that. It's like if I don't have the backstory and I don't have enough the background data but you know I love questions about like you know culture and community and uh, advanced transitional techniques and transition theory and you know a lot of that kind of stuff social dynamics you know those are things that uh, fit real well of course a disclaimer here you can uh, read that on your own and uh, so first question Susan asked if someone is brand new is starting the transition diet, as the book suggests, how soon before they can do the magic mirror test safely? Uh, fruit only for two to three days, especially if a uh, person's suffering from some kind of gut issues for years or a bad diet for over 60 years, thanks in advance. So I uh, uh, tagged the, uh, the, the annotated mucus diet book that I have here. Uh, let me bring it up, so we're gonna go to 30, Page 35, so this is the, so let's uh, just kind of read this real quick. So for people that are not familiar with the uh, Magic Mirror is, uh, say uh, Magic, uh, Eric writes uh, in the, in this is lesson 4A, we're talking about supplement to the diagnostic. So uh, to, uh, to give the overview, the Magic Mirror concept, it's a diagnostic tool. And so it's one of several diagnostic tools that Arnold Eret talks about in the Mucus Diet Healing System. And uh, so Eret says, proof that your personal, in fact, hold on, let me, let me get closer so you guys can maybe read this. Proof, proof that your personal individual symptom, sore or sensation according to what, uh, uh, according to what your disease is named, is nothing nothing more than an extraordinary local accumulation of waste. So Eric saying that when you when you start to go through detox, so-called detox symptoms and eliminations and things like that, that you're actually experiencing a point where is probably there's some kind of accumulation of waste or uh, uh, or what Eric calls constipation. Again, we use the term constipation not just for bowel constipation, but for cellular constipation throughout the entire body. Uh, so Eric says that the coated tongue is evidence of a, con a constitutional encumbrance throughout the entire system, which obstructs and congests the circulation by dissolved mucus, and this mucus uh, even appears in the urine. So, and this is, uh, you know, a lot of people get real obsessed about the, uh, the uh, analyzing the urine for sediment. 
of, you know, Eric, one of the first people that I've ever seen to actually talk about that. Uh, and that's another diagnostic uh, tool. Uh, the presence of unevacuated feces retained through sticky mucus in the pockets of the intestines, constantly poisoning and thereby interfering with proper digestion and blood building. So that's kind of the first part of that. So let's get to the actual recommendation. Uh, so Eric says, fast one or two days or eat fruits only, such as oranges, apples, any kind of juicy fruit. Uh, in season for two to three days and you will notice that your tongue will become heavily coated. So if you do a short, this would be like a short term fast. Uh, if you eat nothing but fruit for a day and you've never done that, something like that before, uh, Eric's saying if you take a look at your tongue the next morning or at some point in the day, you might notice that there's an accumulation of slime and stuff that's kind of on your tongue. Uh, is there it says the tongue is the mirror not only of the stomach but of the entire membrane system as well the fact that this heavy coating returns even if removed by a tongue scraper once or twice a day is an accurate indication of the amount of filth mucus and other poisons accumulated in the tissues of your entire system now being eliminated on the inside surface of the stomach intestines and every cavity of your body you will become further convinced of this fact of this diagnosis of your disease by another surprise in store for you if you will empty your intestines uh, both before and after the test. So emptying your intestines, now we're talking about the enemas. So to execute this effectively, you would, wherever you're at, so if, if you've never done this before, I would say, okay, well, just do, let's do one day. One day of, uh, of maybe fruit, or fruit juice and, and go back into what Eric, uh, you know, read through act, the actual fasting lessons that Eric talks about because it complements this. But um, uh, go over, do that and you would say, and this would be after transitioning. So honestly, if you're just kind of getting started with all this, I would say, give yourself, go uh, transition for a couple weeks. So follow those transition menu diets for a couple weeks uh, perhaps start doing your the enemas ex experiment with the we do lemon juice and distilled water enemas but it, uh, maybe experiment with the enemas and for a couple weeks and then after a couple weeks that's generally when I recommend doing the first short-term fast when I'm working with with clients that depending on their background and so I like to see people get that transition in get a good solid couple weeks of transition you don't you don't have to rush into fasting this is not a race into it but after those, if you've been able to withstand and things are kind of cool, you found a plateau point for those first couple weeks, then uh, you, you could maybe consider check, go, going back to this and saying, okay, you're gonna, let's, let's, and, and depending on where you're at, you could go for the juice or go for the, or, or, or the fruit. Or the first time you do it, maybe just do a day of fruit and then evaluate. And that's part of the transition. We don't have to rush. Uh, do one of these things and then evaluate. Take time to analyze and evaluate what you experienced, what happened, get back on the transition. And then the next time you do it, then maybe you can fast for, do, uh, do the fruit juice fast as Eric recommends to do. Uh, and, and, but really just keep control of it. You don't have to try and do, do anything real intense. And one of the uh, greatest recommendations that Eric has along these lines is that you, you evaluate your situation as you move along. And I don't hear a lot of the folks that's out there that are in this plant-based healing renaissance, uh, as maybe I'll call it, uh, I don't hear a lot of that, uh, th that emphasized of, of really, really analyze from day to day. You know, keep, uh, look at what you're going through and, and how you're going and and the reason that we say that you really want to study the mucus's diet and study this information a lot is because you want to, uh, you, when you go through these things, the more informed you are on the methodologies, the easier it is going to be for you to make a decision on the fly based on the data that you're experiencing. Because it's like this, this data is coming in, you're experiencing this data, it comes in and you're feeling it, and then you'll say, okay, this, I'm feeling this, so let me, you know, let me try this. 
Um, here it says the mirror on the tongue surface reveals to the observer the amount of encumbrance that has been clogged up in the system since childhood through wrong mucus forming foods. Uh, after observing the urine during this test by allowing it to stand for a few hours, you will note the elimination of quantities of mucus uh, in the same. The actual amount of filth and waste which is mysterious because of your trouble is almost unbelievable. So right there, we got the urine test. Now, the what I add to this, I'm going to skip to, to my notes at the end of the lesson. The uh, what what I try to bring to this is to rein people in that be, would become obsessive compulsive about these simple diagnostic tools. These tools are not meant to be become obsessive about, and and that is what has been happening in recent years. People are starting to. Uh, become very kind of obs obsessive about where, where you're you know checking your tongue every day or you're you know or, or if you get very concerned if every time you urinate you don't see a bunch of uh, of clouds or something in there that's don't please don't do that this is th these methods are not meant to uh, to be like that and so I say the magic mirror can be very helpful and enlightening tool to understand and use yet it is it is important uh, to put it into proper perspective and not obsess over it. As Eric says, your goal should not be to try to fast all the mucus off of your tongue at once. It takes years, perhaps decades, to totally clean the body to the point where your tongue will not secrete excess mucus. Yet the magic mirror can uh, remind us that our body is one whole organism and not merely a collection of unrelated parts. In Western society, we have been conditioned to think about the body as a bunch of individual parts, bones, organs, vessels, etc., uh, which can be and we become compartmentalized in our consciousness. Yet the mucus that is secreted from your tongue is the same that is being secreted along the walls of your stomach, intestines, and colon. Your entire digestive tract uh, may be viewed as one long continuous tube that goes from your mouth to your colon. And many people, and then another point. Many people wonder why they end up with a mouthful of mucus after eating fruit, uh, and this causes some to erroneous believe that the, uh, erroneously believe that the fruit is causing the mucus. Uh, now you may understand that the astringent properties of the fruit are pulling on the mucus membrane and causing the release of excess mucus. Uh, and if your body is encumbered with waste, then the release of mucus in this way is necessary, yet as you rid your body of mucus, this kind of elimination happens less and less. And I will also point out, the mucus that is secreted from your mucus membrane is not the same as the mucus, <laughs> say it with me, that is left behind from uneliminated, undigested food substances. So this is one of the criticisms that some people have been making, uh, particularly if they're coming out of the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the, the Shelton tradition where it is, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, kind of slanderous things that, that Shelton said about Eric and I won't uh, I, I'm, I'm eventually I'm gonna put up a blog post and kind of address that issue the whole Shelton thing but this idea and it's not only him but a lot of people that say okay there's no such thing as mucus forming foods and they try to make a point about the mucus membrane Eric's not talking about foods that specifically cause the mucous membrane to secrete. Like I said right here, you could eat a piece of fruit and it, it can, if it's astringent and depending on what's happening with your lymphatic system, you can get a mouthful of mucus uh, that's secreted from your lymphatic system. It's not the same mucus as if you eat, if you eat a piece of white bread and uh, what, whatever, and then the next argument, people say, well, what about the uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 acids in in the stomach, the digestive fluids, and uh, and, and all of that? Doesn't that take care of it? Uh, in small quantities, yeah, there, there's uh, there's going to be some things that are dealt with with the acids. But what Eric's saying is, when you eat these foods constantly, year after year, the unnatural foods. There's slime that is left behind. Not all of that is taken care of by these gastric fluids. And over time, you get to the point where you have a, a situation where the colon, 
starts to get all you know covered covered in mucus and uh in fact let me bring let me bring that video up and see which i was gonna show last week <laughs> and so to get into this idea so this is one of my videos you can find on the channel spear reviews of colonoscopy videos um, Mucus's diet is a re <laughs> real colon cleanse diet. I did that because uh, colon cleanse diet is a is a key word, and so I was like, man, this is you want colon cleanse diet, you need to deal with mucus diet. You know, so, uh, so you can watch the actual what I have to say about all this. But uh, what I'm showing here, this is the inside of somebody's colon. So this slime around the outside, some of it is, was secreted from the mucous membrane, but some of that is just left over what, what, what has happened because of the result of leftover, nasty, filthy foods. This, this stuff, and this is decades of this that builds up. If you've never cleansed, think, because if you look at that, th think about the power of a broom salad. If you put the right, kind of firm and soft vegetables together and you eat that salad, think about how that's gonna, that's gonna kinda clean, kinda sponge off some of that slime a little bit. But the, the key to understand here is this is slime that's just built up over a long period of time and it's the, the, the combination of the lymphatic fluids and, along with uneliminated, undigested food substances. Mucus forming foods are the foods that degrade into slime. And another, again, when we start talking about one of the self-evident experiences that you can do to uh, figure out what foods are and are not mucus forming, then people get mad and say, well, you're, you're, that's not, it's not a scientific uh, study because you're, you're, not, you're not factoring in the, uh, uh, the gastric juices that will break down the foods. Uh, and and first of all, I never claimed <laughs> that that is uh, that it's a scientific stuff. It's a self-evident type of approach and study. And Eric kind of recommended to do it. But if it just answer me this question: if you if you put grapes, say you smashed up some grapes and you put those grapes in water for ten minutes, and next to it you took a bowl of water and you put a, a big a piece of white bread in there. One of these two is going to turn into slime and one isn't. Now I'm not saying that the gastric juices won't do something to this, this white bread slime, uh, but what we, from observation, what we can say is this white bread slime uh, does not fully, fully eliminate is these, those are Eric's words, fully eliminate, never fully eliminated since childhood. So that's why, the, that's why you can eat mucus forming foods and unnatural foods uh, for years and not have a lot of health issues. And, and the health issues might not come until later on down the pipe. But uh, ultimately, you know, it's, it's, you, you know, ultimately this stuff builds up over time and so uh so these are things to uh things to consider and uh and uh, yeah and that's uh but yeah this is this col colon video is uh <laughs> this is this is serious i mean this is this is what we're working with i mean this is the real deal here you know put a little, little lemon juice in distilled water you put that up in there. You start to loosen that. You just just you're just irrigating the colon. This is going to start loosening uh, this waste up. So even if you didn't fast, uh, but you started the transition diet and you started to incorporate uh, some of these enemas, you know, in the first couple enemas you do is probably not going to be the most pleasant experience in the world. Maybe some people it is, but a lot of times you know you got to adjust to it, and you and, and that's why I usually tell people do enemas consistently for two weeks while you're, while you're doing the transition diet in the beginning to get a sense of what it's all about. Then you make your own decision about if you want to continue doing enemas or only do enemas during fasting periods. 
uh, you know, folks, uh, a number of people in the community do daily enemas. Uh, for a lot of people, that's very controversial and that's very extreme. There's some practitioners of mucus's diet that only do enemas uh, during the fasting period. Uh, Eric, when you read what he had to say about that, kind of left it open to a bit of interpretation. So I, I put that into your court, but my recommendation is to, uh, uh, to, to get started to just get started and give it a chance. Um, you know, this is, <laughs> I'm just, I, I got fascinated all over again. And this, so then this would be an example of after somebody had cleansed, and now we don't recommend the particular cleanse that they have in this video, but you know, you, it's possible to clean, uh, to get, you know, get this cleaned out, out of there. And an another thing about colonoscopies is that, uh, uh, you know, they, they use a very problematic way of, of evacuating. You know, Arid is not a fan of these, you know, kind of harsh chemicals that are, that are used sometimes to help a person of just kind of clear out their entire intestines so that they can put the camera up there. Uh, that's, not, uh, that, that's not what we're talking about. You know, we're talking about a lifestyle situation where you're, you know, you're really transitioning over time uh, properly and so so anyway i hope you know i just went, <laughs> went on and on about this question but uh hopefully uh that, that answers it like i said you you, you gotta just uh, uh if if you because you also want to be mentally ready so if you're if you're not quite there yet and you're not feeling like you're ready to do the fast don't first force yourself to do it but uh or or just see what happens you eat fruit fruit all day but whatever you do, I still, you know, I do recommend to, you know, kind of get the enema in there at some point just to make sure that, that you're keeping that stuff moving. You want to keep that stuff moving. But, uh, you know, but take your time, you know, work those transition menus and, uh, and, and see what happens on, on the other side of that. You know, get, get the gut cleaned out. All right. Second question. We got uh, Danny that says, uh, what in your opinion causes the increase in body weight and size after one had become somewhat scrawny during their early years of practicing the system? Uh, what would you say causes this growth? So, you know, when we start getting into conversations about, because uh, there's the question after this is also about, you know, kind of is more about building muscle and how to do that on this diet and everything like that. Um, but our generally you know me and brother air you know our a way that we just deal with this topic generally is to to not overthink it not really analyze it you know so i don't you know i don't even know what i weigh now you know i don't weigh myself those are diagnostic tools that i find to be not very useful on the mucus's diet path i went year you know when i was first practice a diet it I went about a year of not weighing myself at all. And then I was just at a certain point, there was some place I might even have been in like a truck stop. And one of those, where you put the coin in and I was like, let me see what I weigh. And, uh, you know, I'd lost like a hundred pounds and that's how I found out like, wow, you know, cause I wasn't, I wasn't focused on that. I wasn't obsessed about, about the weight thing. With that said, my there, I, I have a, a theory because it's, it's hard to, speak in absolutes about this because not everybody is the same. Uh, there's a number of people that were uric acid physiologies that, uh, that, that, didn't, that didn't necessarily get bigger after, you know, they would kind of maintain a very slender size throughout and not necessarily grow bigger or anything like, like you're you know, talking about there. Uh, mucus types sometimes I think have that tendency. Now what I experienced for me was when I started practicing a diet, it was, it really was like a rebirth. And so it was almost like my genes had went back in time and I, I went back to the, to the physiological age that I was supposed to be. Cause a lot of people, if you look at the before and after pictures of that period and people that knew me, uh, they, they'll even, you know, people even kind of do a joke to say that was, that was uncle Mike, you know, me at 18 years old, was I looked older than I look now and definitely back then. And uh, so I had kind of transformed where I, I looked like a teenager, 
Uh, and I mean, I was still was a teenager, but you know, I looked like a younger teenager. And and I maintained that kind of look, and and you know, in early, and I was doing kind of long fast and that kind of stuff. So I got there was a period where I got very very slender. Um, then over the years, I would if I fasted or if I did something, I might return to that type of slender. But I found that the, my plateau point was a little different. It was you know it was, it was a little bit you know a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier. Uh, then when I uh, uh, you know, year kind of years later, I I noticed that it's almost like, it, kind of like what you're saying, where I was, where I grew, I I, I actually grew some more. So I got, you know, I actually got a little bit taller in my, you know, and I then my, the way that I look at that is, there was obstruction that prevented me from actually growing, to my to to the to the full extent that I was supposed to grow, and so. Uh, I started to unfold again. Again, if I, if I kind of had a rebirth or turn back the time uh, when I was 19 years old, then years later, it's, it's almost like nat- now I'm growing into adulthood. In- you know, instead of, instead of growing into that at the 20, now I feel like I'm actually uh, evolving into more of an adulthood physiology uh, now, you know, at, at, age, you know, at age 35, if that makes any sense. You know, these are stuff that I have thought about and observed, uh, you know, but, but it's, it's interesting. I mean, it, it changes, uh, and, and depending on, you know, how mucus lean you are or, you know, pe- periods of mucus free, all that kind of stuff, uh, you know, the, 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 that, that kind of thing is going to change. But so, but as far as the theory goes, that's kind of my theory on that, that in some cases, uh, you, you kind of, you reset the, to a certain extent, you, you go back in time physiologically. And to the point where uh, it, it's almost like the Benjamin Button kind of concept of you, you unfold backwards. And that's what it felt like when I started the mucus diet. Like I was unfolding back into my, my embryo <laughs> was actually sort of re- retracting and going back to where it, more w- where it was supposed to be because I had, had forced it. In a diff, in a direction that was unnatural for it, and it t- and it found a way to tolerate it. Uh, but with the mucus diet, I kind of unf- I reversed that, you know. And, and people talk like that all the time, you know, the re- to reverse aging and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, I kind of experienced that really. And uh, and like I said, the rebirth it's a, it's a real rebirth. And uh, and so I think at a certain point, you're you're still going to continue to unfold. But now I, I'm unfolding. Uh, much slower at a much slower rate, uh, yet it's still changing because that that did my my shoulders actually got broader again a- after you know af- after this period. Uh, so so that's kind of my testimony on it. Like I said, I've observed a number of people, and not everybody has that. Not everybody necessarily goes through that uh, that kind of thing, especially uric acid types have a tendency uh, to, to stay very slender, you know, but they, but they might have different other kinds of physiological changes. But we're, we're at the very early stages, you know, the, the embryo stages, uh, that pun was kind of intended, uh, <laughs> kind of the embryo stages of that type of study, you know, really looking at, at modern day case studies of people's physiologies and how it uh, in the different direction it goes. Now I know with Brother Air, he after being on the diet for ten years, and then he, when he did four years of the peanut butter and jelly on toast era, uh, you know he says he had got fairly big, and and that was directly because he was in a you know kind of an extended mucus lean period. That's where he was physiologically. That's what was going on for him. Uh, and then when he got off of that and he got on the fruit, he says that he's never been skinnier than when he had did the year on fruit. So even when he's fruit juice fasting, he maintains more size and mass uh, than when he was eating nothing but fruit for you know, those, those periods when he was you know, 20 years into practice and he had did, uh, did a year on fruit and that kind of stuff. So, so we're, these are all case studies, but we are uh, you know, just kind of observing and going, going on the journey to see what, uh, to see what really happens. Uh, but to kind of follow up to that, Robert asked, what is your take on building mus- uh, huge muscles 
and a strong body on the mucusless and fruitarian raw vegan diet and is it uh, possible at all and so my I've we've talked about this in some older videos and my response to that is to me that that actual question is problematic like that that what that viewpoint that paradigm because what that does is that sees the world through a, a lens that is based on pus and mucus eating so what i rather do is inst instead of say if it is or is not possible is just encourage you to to go on this journey and as they say let let go you know let go and let god or let go and let the you know get out of the way of the universe or let go whatever uh you know little phrase you want to use for that uh but get out of the way and 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 let's go on this pioneering journey to actually see what is our physiology supposed to be and uh and knowing that we don't we don't know you know we just being honest about it like ah, we don't we don't know what we're what we're supposed to what we're actually supposed to be like but uh that is uh you know that so that's sort of that that perspective you know now when you start talking about you know is it possible to do these different athletic feats and all that kind of stuff you know one thing that's interesting is there there is a dynamic of what, what if things that you've done before the mucusless diet you can still if you know any anything that you put time and energy into and you develop and you get kind of get good at or or develop a competency for it's it's you don't just lose everything it's not and it's still going to be reflected in what you do so now you know i spent years as a varsity athlete working you're know, doing like hardcore workouts you know as a football player and in years there was some years early on when i practiced a diet where i i stopped working out like that in weight rooms just totally because my mind was so messed up and every time I went into the weight room, I couldn't just do a light workout. I had to push my body to the point of pain every time because that's how I was trained. And I had done that for years. And so I had to go, I had to go years to kind of undo that, that, that kind of mental thing. Um, and so, uh, but now I work out more regularly you know i don't talk about it all the time because you know i just say you know eric talks about <laughs> it's in the book you know so i probably should, I, I like to kind of focus on transition diet but i do try to say well yeah work out and or or exercise or you know eric talks about walking dancing uh there's the eric exercises now you got a video you can follow on the channel that danielle demonstrating the exercises uh, but uh, I do like to, you know, jumping, doing the trampoline thing, brother. Air rebounds, you know, he goes and, and again, something you, a lot of people don't know that because we don't necessarily talk about it because it's not in the top of our mind, you know, because we're not, you know, it's not a, it's not like a focus, even though we probably should every once in a while mention it. So we do encourage people to exercise, is it is good, you know, and any time that you're getting the circulation moving, because for me that's what it's all about, get the circulation moving. Uh, but you know, in the weight room, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm big, I'm bigger than a lot of people in the weight, you know, when I go to the weight room, I'm bigger than a lot of people in there and I'm pushing more weight than they are. Not that I'm like, you know, not, it's not a competition. I just notice, you know, I'm just like, oh, okay. You know, where, where people get so concerned about this, but that's my physiology. And I, because I, you know, I learned in all of those skills, I didn't lose all of that, you know, so I have good technique in, in the weight room, you know. Uh, now I don't push myself like I used to, you know, because I don't like to be sore all the time. Uh, in, that, in that old model, you just, you live a life of being sore. You just, you work out super hard, you work those muscles and then you're sore. Uh, but for me, in terms of the muscles, I don't know, I just never had, a, I've never had a problem of where where it was like my muscles it was all disappearing or something i mean that just wasn't i don't know that was never never an issue with me where i know you know some people get real kind of into that but again a difference between me and a lot of people is i just dedicated to the transition uh and and just just boastfully i don't have a you know i don't have a problem deal dealing with the transition whereas uh 
you know, a lot of people, you know, they're trying to push themselves too far, too fast, and and then, you know, trying to do like all this, you know, 100% raw. And I know you, you mentioned with the raw, and with me, you know, I'm, I'm not a hardcore raw, you know, people sometimes put me in that category of like, like the raw food folks, uh, but I'm, I'm a mucus diet healing system folk. Uh, which is which is different, you know. You can use the mucus diet, and there's a lot of folks that are either coming from or going toward the raw mucusless kind of experience. But that's not what I push. Uh, I'm not pushing everybody into that. Like you have to do that right away. I'm trying to encourage people to really deal with the transition diet, go through those lessons, and look at how much thing, how many different things that you actually are that is allowed. It's another concept I don't like when people say, "What am I allowed to eat?" You know, you eat eat what you want to. You know, and, and do what you want to do. There's no this this <laughs> this is not there's no, these are not rules and laws where that where we're over your back saying oh if you don't if you don't do this you're you're out of the group you know you, i hate that that whole vibe that a lot of the raw raw vegans and stuff kind of have that that kind of real intense angry thing you know where they're just they're just mad about you know because they haven't transitioned <laughs> somebody asked that why i think yesterday i was i did a little facebook live stream and somebody was like why are so, so, a lot of the raw foodists they're, they're so angry and and they're they're very you know and they're mean and i'm like well because they got a they got a gut full of unilluminated feces and they ain't never transition. A lot of them don't you know they they scare the enemas. They don't believe in in touching the enema, uh, and a lot of them they want to try to. They went from eating a standard American diet or whatever from whatever country standard diet they came from, and they started to basically with no transition just just try to eat all fruit. And say okay I'm I'm gonna be a raw fruitarian. Um, and another point, I mean, we, we recently, we've been losing a number of people that, uh, that didn't transition and it's like, people still are not getting the message. And so I'm, I will <laughs> I'll make the statement, get the annotated mucus diet healing system, uh, and, and read those sections on transition because, uh, you don't need to try to put yourself up against what other people are doing and talking about on videos and all that kind of stuff. You know, really let uh, let, let your body go through. Uh, you know, go go through what it needs to go through because uh, it's you know it's we're we're, lo we're losing folks. I mean, there there's a guy that last year sent me a message saying that they wanted to be the face of the mucus's diet where in in another country and uh and and every once in a while you know i get that kind of you know somebody is real in it but then you know, i find out how long they practice a diet and they've only practiced for a year or two and so i just kind of i watch those people and just kind of say okay I'm, I'm watching and brother air saying we just kind of watch and say okay well let's let's see what you do because this is this is like a a long term kind of thing you know we, we're very we're not impressed by a lot of the short term achievements that people have here because we've seen those short term achievements not go anywhere over and over and over again and that's why we just tell people look slow it down I ate a part of my early part of the transition when I was getting off of fast food I mean I was still eating uh, bean burritos at Taco Bell for, for several months you know and getting sun chips and uh, nature burger and vegetarian chili. I mean, I went through a serious vegan transition. And even before that, I, I, was, I had uh, the cottage cheese, bananas and applesauce and dates mixture uh, for a while, or well, maybe not bananas and that, but I transitioned to the bananas, applesauce, uh, baked bananas, applesauce and chopped dates. Uh, I mean, the only thing that I really didn't deal with that was in the original mucus diet book was I didn't do the egg based mayonnaise uh, but other than that I did use cottage cheese I did you know have plenty of cooked foods you know but I, st I just started to incorporate the transitional methodologies I, st I, I, I mean I before practicing the diet I could go weeks or months without eating a salad I mean there, a, a salad wasn't something that I would eat all the time 
Uh, and so I went from how I used to eat and then now I'm eating a salad every day. So regardless of if I got vegetarian chili or a soy burger or whatever kind of stuff, I got this salad happening and I'm starting to learn how to cook vegetables. I'm steaming vegetables, uh, the broccoli and, and cauliflower and, and carrots and you know, so I'm all, the, all that kind of stuff. So I've got these steamed vegetables, the onion saute. And these are things that are actually in the, uh, in the e-course. I, uh, I have a, a, a mucus-free food demonstration. I show you how to fit, prepare uh, the baked acorn squash and the steamed vegetables the way that we do it, and uh, at least the way I do it. Uh, the onion saute, which helped me get all, over all kinds of humps, you know, the on, onion saute. Uh, and so I'm saying I want to see people plateauing and in, in kind of enjoying the transition, enjoying that part of it. Uh, and because there's so many people kind of coming from the raw food side of it, uh, there, you know, we, we, we don't hear about that as much. We don't hear as much about people that are really, really practicing that, that part of the, you know, the early part of the transition diet, you know, and going back over those menus and those lessons and, and stuff. And so we're really, uh, you know, really encouraging you to do that. But so as far as this goes, like I said, you, it, it the, the, in terms of muscles, we advocate, you know, do the arid exercises, you know, continue, you know, do rational exercises. Uh, you know, don't try to push yourself too far and, and get into that where you're sore all the time stuff. A lot of stretches, a lot of breath work, uh, the, the kind of yoga breath work and all, all that stuff is cool. Uh, and so, but it's for us, it's not about trying to build up and be huge, but it's about trying to remove obstruction and waste and really getting rid of what's unnecessary. So what, what do we not need physiologically? But just all I can say is go on, if, 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 you're, if you're ready and if you're down, then go on the journey and, and don't put demands, don't try and uh, negotiate with the mucus of diet healing system. That's a mistake that a lot of people make where they, they try to negotiate and, uh, and, and kind of you know, say, well, I'm you know, I want to do this or I want to, it's like, well, at that point, it's not about what you want. It's about what your physiology needs. And so there's that, this path takes a bit of that, you know, it takes a bit of that let go of the preconceived notions of what you think health is supposed to look like and all that kind of stuff and kind of go on this journey. And, uh, but do it rationally. Don't do it ex on an extremist type of approach, just do it rationally. Just really work the system. Uh, so yeah, so I hope that, hope that helps. And uh, Alexandros asked, uh, he has a couple questions. Do you eat the seed of grapes or watermelons? Uh, is it mucus free? Should I always remove all the seeds on all fruit? I don't uh, it depends on the seeds. Some seeds I swallow. If, uh, you know, generally, like with watermelon, I won't swallow all of them. You know, I'll spit out some, but some of them do get swallowed. Uh, if, if I swallow, if I do eat seeds, I tend to eat them. I don't chew them up. I tend to eat them, uh, would, would swallow them down kind of whole. And, um, and then the certain types of seeds actually shouldn't break break down where they would actually come out uh, in, in your feces unharmed by the gastric acids uh, and the idea there would be that you would if you were to go and have a bowel movement in nature that you would actually uh, the, that those seeds could fertilize and grow something of course very rare it's hard to find the fruit that haven't that ha hasn't had their their seeds messed up that they that have basically impotent fruit uh, is what we deal with a lot here but as far as that goes, I mean, mo most seeds and fruit, no, I would not consider them to be mucus forming, uh, so I wouldn't wouldn't worry about them. Uh, I mean, those grape seeds, some of those really huge seeds, I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't try to swallow those, and I wouldn't want to chew them up. Uh, but, uh, but not not something that that's a real big, you know, concern or anything. So if you if you eating some fruit and you get a few seeds uh, along with it, then you know that's not. Not, not a big deal, in my opinion. Um, 
I mean, there's some there's some seeds that, especially ones that are not necessarily in fruit, that once once you start getting going in the in the more starchier direction of like sunflower seeds and stuff that's more kind of you getting over in that nuts type of thing, then yeah, then so that's now you're getting over where if you're eating a whole like a whole something where you could just eat a bunch of seeds like that and they're not really hard, they're kind of chewable and stuff, then then yeah, I mean they're they're potentially a little mucus forming and stuff, and you probably want to eat something like that like you would nuts uh with with some raisins and stuff but um but yeah but no i just saw albin oh thank you i'm glad to hear no no uh, no buffering <laughs> issues yet so i'm very happy about that um then another question is celery mucus free why is it not on the list uh well it is on the list i don't know which not sure which list you're referring to but if you go to the, uh, the main list, let's see, what is that, 90, 96 in the uh, annotated mucuses diet, uh, they, in the acid binding, non mucus forming, or mucus list, or mucus free foods, get down here. Celery is on the list as a raw vegetable that does not degrade into slime. Again, that's how we. Celery, if you put it in water, or you chew it up and spit it back out and let it sit in water, celery is not gonna turn into slime. Whereas, uh, if you go up here to, if you, if you chew up some corn and, and then you put it, like the corn eventually will get, will, will get slimy. You know, the corn uh, uh, is, is, you know, is mucus forming. Uh, unripened banana it can get can get slimy, you know these, these kind of things. Uh, but again, these these are not. Uh, it's not that you can't use some of these things because this it's not a foodless diet. So this these aren't. Uh, it's it's not a do not eat list. It's just an objective list of asking the question: Does this degrade into slime, or does it not? And if it degrades into slime, how well does it eliminate? Because not all mucus forming foods are created equal. Some eliminate much better in, in the body than others and we want to try to use ones that, that eliminate uh, the best when we are going through our transition periods. And, uh, and I posted up, the, there's a, you can find Professor Spira's food list on mucusfreelife.com where I get into that a little bit, uh, a little bit deeper. Uh, another question, my nose hurts and has hard mucus in the walls. What can I do and why is it happening? Um, well, I mean, I, it, it, it's, it's constipation, you know, cellular constipation, lymphatic constipation, wh whatever terminology or concept you want to use. Uh, but without more details of your personal situation, just the general recommendations, we talked about the lemon juice, distilled water enemas. Uh, probably it would be probably good to, to if, if you have any waste we saw the weight the colon waste if you got any of that happening uh, in your colon you might want to you know go on ahead and irrigate that get that kind of stuff out of there if you got you know any backed up waste or stuff in your system get that on out of there especially if you're transitioning into a cleaner diet um, uh, then you know you want to you want to get that stuff kind of out of there uh, as far as the uh, you know it hurting a couple other things you could do besides the diet so we got the transition diet so you get on the transition do your enemas and and kind of see what happens you know that's that again that diagnostic uh, do a little bit of the air at mirror you know do do a short term fast when you're ready you know after some time of transitioning you can you know go through all of those steps uh, something not mentioned in the mucus's diet that you that you could explore which I uh, uh, well, one thing is kind of uh, mentioned, which is, uh, you know, Eric talks about horseradish root, and there's a, uh, there's a horseradish therapy that, uh, let me find, graded. So he's got this special mucus eliminator recipe, and, uh, which is uh, grated horseradish mixed with honey, and uh, after mix mixing, allow to stand uh, to take the sharp taste off and the honey is, is uh, only used to make it more palatable. Uh, Two-third horseradish and one-third honey 
or to suit taste. And the, the ordinary radish, especially the black radish, may also be used from, uh, in the same way or finely sliced. So he's basically making a horseradish salad with honey to take off the taste and, and, and saying that you, you would eat that. And that would cause a certain kind of uh, uh, response. I mean, physiologically, you know, you're going to uh, the, get the circulation rolling. Uh, but the horseradish therapy that I have, that I do and have recommended to some of my clients is to cut off a little piece of horseradish and uh, chew it. Put it in your mouth, keep your mouth closed and chew it. And then you're going to want to get kind of put it to one, one of the s different sides of your uh, mouth because if that horseradish is just on your, on your tongue, it's going to hurt <laughs> eventually probably if you have feeling in your tongue. But uh, let uh, once that chemistry from you chewing it, uh, it, it you know, gives off its chemistry, it's going to feel like your entire head is going to just, you know, just, just, just kind of open up and it could get hot. Your ears could get hot. You know, you, you feel it all over your head and face, but it totally opens up those capillaries, all the microscopic capillaries in your, uh, in your, in your uh, nasal cavity and passages. And so if, if you have some chronic uh, 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 congestion and inflammation, uh, that is a, gonna help. I'm not saying it's gonna totally take care of it, but that, that can start the process of getting this stuff moving. Uh, moving along and uh, another thing that you can investigate is the neti pot is uh, where you uh, uh, the, the standard neti pot is water with some sea salt uh, or something like that and you would put that in and and then uh, uh, you, using the neti pot you you know you let it drain through one nostril well it drains through the whole passage but put it in one nostril comes out the other and you go in the other direction. I should, I should probably do a video demonstration on that. There's a few, there's, there's some videos of people that are demonstrating it, of uh, the videos are of various quality. But that's something to check into. Uh, when I do it, I like to actually use uh, the, uh, the Heal All Tea, the Dr. Morris Heal All Tea, and so I'll, I'll water that down. And, uh, and there's, there's this other little, I mean, I get a little bit fancy with 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 mine that i've evolved it over the years so i i put a little bit of i put your know, water heal all tea a little bit of sea salt in there there's this uh this herbal kind of uh uh liquid that is meant to open up passages it has some herbs in there that open up passages and i've i've found that to be useful and so i kind of make up my own little concoction and i'll use that for uh neti pot uh, but to start off with, you could just explore the general water and, and, and salt approach with that or, or just water. You know, sometimes water without the salt is, can, can be irritating because you, you don't want to put too much of those th things in there or it can cause uh, uh, further inflammation. So you don't want that. But you just want to gently start to try and loosen this stuff up and, and, and then get... Uh, get the circulation moving. You get it. Get the, uh, as we would say, the lymphatic system moving. Get all that stuff rolling, and that's going to help with that situation. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. But that's all. You know, part part of the transition. Part of getting this stuff moving. Uh, get this stuff eliminating. Next question. Kristen asks, "How do I combat my family's pressure to conform uh, to their eating?" habits. Uh, this is a complex situation because sharing meals uh, with family is how our social and emotional connections have always been strengthened. This is a very troubling thing uh, to me because I visit family often and I am not sure how to remove myself from the eating aspect without removing uh, myself from the actual environment, uh, be it a favorite restaurant or at a uh, family home. It is often insulting to refuse food, uh, suppose I, uh, uh, I suppose that I have to learn the art and grace of declining. Uh, how do you explain this to a uh, Mexican mother-in-law? Ha ha. Uh, sadly, I, uh, I lack a community as I am the only person I know who is fervently exploring this newfound way of living, uh, mucus-free. So, uh, this is uh, one, of the, one of the toughest things for a lot of people that you know, practice a mucus diet. Ah, that is uh, distilled water. 
So people get so like, oh, what are you, what are you drinking? What is that? Ah, ah. It's, 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 calm down. Distilled water, not, not very, uh, not fancy. But um, uh, so what I would say here, there's if you go back in the YouTube channel, there's some older videos where I actually talk about this. Uh, there's a video that's called it's something like, what's the number one reason that people uh, that, that people stop practicing the mucus diet. And um, it is, uh, th and, and I say, you know, now, I don't know, I, I might, that, that opinion's changing a little bit. I think there's still a big social thing, but th that's not as, that's not as tough of a thing today as it was years ago. Still very tough, uh, but now there's, now, one of the reasons that a lot of people don't stick with the mucus's diet is because they've, they've failed to transition. They've just abandoned the whole concept of transition and they're trying to combine mucusless diet methodology and theories with all of these other people's theories and other systems or other lack of systems and stuff. And so there's a lot of uh, kind of the naturopathic buffet uh, that's happening now where there's not a lot of people that are becoming masters of one discipline and one way of thinking. There, there's this kind of piecemeal buffet of let me take a little Eret, let me take a little Morris, let me take a little Dr. Sabi, let me, you know, a little, you know, Gabriel Cousin, you know, well, just, there's that kind of thing that's happening now as opposed to, you know, the when I got into the mucus diet, that was all I was studying. But I was, or I shouldn't say that's all I was studying, everything I studied was was through the mucus diet. So Eric mentions a number of different people, uh, authors and, and, and folks. And so when I researched those people, I was like researching all of the different people that Eric mentioned to see what he, you know, kind of read it for myself and see, okay, what was he saying? Here's the source material that he mentioned. Let me go and check it out. So this, so I'm a, I'm a strong advocate of that kind of research of, uh, and, and to me, that's how you study as opposed to just kind of the YouTube world. And I know a lot of you, that's what, that's maybe how you found me, you know, that's what, uh, so I, I'm not, it's not, it's not like a criticism in that sense, but uh, there, there, there's a time to explore and kind of be open-minded and look to see all this stuff. And then there's a time to get serious and kind of become devoted to a path. Uh, if you really want to have a mastery of that particular path. And so uh, my recommendation is that, you know, however you got to Mucus's diet and this, and this path, that if you are really serious about it, then really dig into it, you know, and keep on rolling with it. So, so anyway, but back to the family uh, piece. Uh, so that video, number one reason the people uh, fail the Mucus's diet, or not fail, but well, I forget exactly what I said. Uh, but there, you know, I kind of, there was, had some tough things to say about that. Cause I, and I've, I've softened up a little bit over the years as I used to be very, very hardcore. And that was one of the kind of distinguishing characteristics about my practice that I don't really, uh, 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 you know, I don't expect others to do where I was very, very hardcore about when I, in the early years of my practice about, uh, not, you know, people would probably say I was, you know, like, you know, anti-social or something, which I wasn't. I was playing music and socializing through my art and going, I was around people and dealing and that kind of stuff. But I didn't, you know, I, at a certain point I stopped eating out at restaurants because they were like a crack house for me. Cause I used to, when, cause they, I couldn't go to a restaurant and not get what I used to eat. I mean, it was, it was a, a real addiction trigger where I'd go in and, you know, I used to try to go to a place called Frisch's here in the States and they have a, a kind of a pathetic, there wasn't a whole lot of places that had salad bars, but they had have this salad bar. Maybe they have some kind of vegetable soup that would be questionable. You would be like, is there any beef broth in there or whatever? But, uh, there was a little bit where I went there, went to Ruby Tuesdays or you know, places that had, uh, salad bars, but it just got so hard because I'd be in there and I'd, I'd be smelling all this other food and I was still addicted to those food. You know, I could still go back and eat those things. And so it would make me want it. And I just like, man, this is, this is too hard. Then 
by the time I got to the point where I uh, got kind of got off of the foods where I, where I no longer would have that craving, then it just was it was hard to, to see my loved ones you know eating stuff like you know, know that, you know with the information that I had gotten on how they're you know they're hurting themselves you know I was it got hard uh, to be in that environment and you know and the smells and all that kind of stuff and so so that being said my approach was hardcore about that that kind of thing where I I just I just basically kind of disconnected a bit and uh so but I don't recommend doing that uh, because I know that that's kind of not every very few people can actually do that because I don't, I don't know a whole lot of other people that was able to do that the way that I did it uh, but what I what I do recommend for folks is so you have a couple options uh, if you if you're gonna hang out you got to kind of have a plan you either bring your stuff I used to do that some in the early days I would bring my food with me and so uh, you know it was it was you know it was a couple weddings that I was like a part of and doing stuff and so I would bring my own food so we were having the banquet everybody else would have the banquet stuff but I had like a, a bag of apples and some lemons and some, some oranges or something that I brought with me and I just and I didn't make a big deal about it I just people would look at me funny but it was like I just had I, I couldn't care less how people thought about me in them situations I just I just tuned it all out and I just did what I needed to do and it and, and because I had that attitude it just it really got to the point where people just didn't care they didn't even make a big deal about it no more because I wasn't making a big deal about it uh, you know a lot of the some of the vegans and stuff they they run into that problem where they uh, because they, they they they're trying to say something and really attack uh, uh, try to attack folks when like you're you know you're eating death and you know and then like kind of creating these kinds of uh, uh, th this kind of animosity and I just never did that I kind of I, I, I didn't I didn't speak until spoken to basically uh, uh, I would I would wait until somebody had something you know, if they asked me a question about the diet uh, and then I always downplayed it uh, that was my technique where because as excited as I was about what was happening and, and, and the diet and just all that information, I learned that uh, one of the better techniques in terms of dealing with people is to, is to like undersell it. Just does that actually draws them in further? That makes them more intrigued if you're not because because they get this sense that you have this, this, this secret, information but you're for whatever reason you're not just giving it away and so that intrigues people but if, if you, as soon as you talking to people you're like you know you're just oh you, you know, blah 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 and you know eat this and you're eating death and pus and you know and all this kind of stuff then uh you know that that turns people off and or that or that makes them adversarial and want to want to try to fight you and attack and so but these were just things i kind of kind of dealt with so when you do put yourself in a kind of a family uh, kind of situation like that, you would want to, uh, uh, you know, I, I just just kind of keep just stay to yourself in terms of what you're eating and stuff, and then you kind of into the best of your ability, socialize without making any kind of big deal. I mean, that's what that's one one way to deal with it. Uh, or like I said, with me, I just got to the point where I just I was just bold with, I was like, this is the lifestyle I live, this is what I eat. And I'm gonna have my stuff with me, and, uh, and and it got to the point where people stopped making fun of me. With you know, in the early times, people would make like, hey, "You're eating fruit, <laughs> you're not eating," you know. And then it got to a point where just people. Then there was like the uncomfortable period where people were real uncomfortable with me in their presence, like you know, didn't really know what to say or do. Then when they saw that I really wasn't trying to like, I wasn't trying to pick a fight and I didn't want to attack anybody. I really wasn't there to that. It's not my job to judge everybody in that type of situation. Then it just got cool where they felt comfortable and do what they do. I do what I do and we leave it alone. And so, but these, this, for me, it happened over time. You know, it took, kind of took a long, uh, kind of took a long time. Uh, one concept that I have in my book Spirit Speaks is this idea of the Jerry Springer effects. So I'm going to play this video and because uh, and, and, this is a, I think this is a, still a good concept uh, that, that I like to revisit and it kind of goes with what we're talking about now. Jerry Springer effect. 
phrase coined by Professor Spira to describe adversarial social dynamics that may occur when a practitioner of the mucusless diet attempts to share details about their lifestyle with large groups of uninformed people. Initial practitioners often feel strongly compelled to share their experiences with friends and family, but are met with harsh resentments and emotionally charged arguments. The proposition of the diet often engenders adversarial reactions by those who feel that their own reality is being challenged or judged. Spear advises <coughs> practitioners to keep this in mind when feeling compelled to share their experiences with others. He recommends that the practitioner avoid situations <laughs> where he or she may be attacked by large groups of non-practitioners. <laughs> okay all right um so basically the point of that is that um uh you, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you open yourself up to being attacked by all of these pus and mucus eaters like you're tr you're trying to just you're just trying to be peaceful you're trying to eat your fruit you know and 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 there's always you know, the, if you put yourself in a situation where you now you're going to try to get in an argument uh, or you get into like a debate or something where people, you know, you start getting to, well, well, well some now where, where you get your protein there, buddy? Huh? Where's your protein at? You know, and you and you start going down this rabbit hole. And, you know, and I used to do that in the, in the early days and it got old real quick where it's just like, man, I, I ain't having this conversation. If you're interested in this the book and that was another reason why I even put out all this information because before that when I was going through all this there was no website with mucus's diet there were no uh, you know books that are really being pushed you know the mucus's diet healing system book was out but there was no publicity around the book or the lifestyle and so to try to explain this to people was like you know you know today if anything you could say you you know send them a link and say well this is what Steve Jobs did you know, or something. I mean, there's there's all these different ways that you can get into legitimizing the mucus diet to people easier now. And that was one of my missions was to try to put re enough resources out there so that uh, you at least had some tools, the places where you could send people. Uh, but because we didn't have that, you know, there was a lot of times where I would just give, you know, and I, you know, brother Air, me, we all just gave free mucus diet books to people all the time. We would have them on us and get in a conversation and get into a debate. It would end up getting in a debate and then be like, well, look, here's a copy of the book, read this. But I learned that that doesn't really help. Oftentimes it doesn't inspire people to read the book because uh, if it's free, a lot of people don't take it seriously. So uh, so anyway, you know, I know I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm hit, hitting all these different points and, and kind of not, you know, hit, hitting directly on, but, it, it is a challenge. I mean, I'm, I can't say there's, there's no real secret way around this issue, uh, but a couple things that you could do, like I said, in, in when you're going into something set up by someone else in your family, just make sure you know you, you can kind of bring your own food and your kind of stuff. Uh, if they start asking you and put, trying to put pressure on you to explain the stuff, uh, just say, well, look, you know, I'm, I've been doing this for however long. And, and I like it, you know, I'm exploring it. If you want to learn more about it, uh, you know, you can give them the website. If you're in Mexico, there's that. We actually have, a, a, there, there's a number of our articles and the Spanish language annotated mucus's diet healing system, if you did, if you, uh, you might know, or you, if you, but if you don't, uh, we have a, 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 a Israel a Frutal actually trans, uh, uh, translated the, our edition of the mucus's diet. So that is available out there. Uh, so you can give French if, if they speak, you know, Spanish, assuming speak Spanish, uh, you can give them a copy of the book. You can send them to the website and, and different resources and just kind of say, OK, well, just check this stuff out. This is what I'm into. You know, we don't have to really talk about it right now. Just, you know, before before having a conversation, check it out, because I got into that where I wasn't going to waste my time really trying to explain this if people didn't have a. Uh, if, if they if they weren't willing to to read the book or they weren't willing to take a look at a few articles and check out the information i wasn't going to waste my time you know to kind of talking to those people even if it was like close you know close folks and so that was just kind of a rule 
that I uh, that I had made from for myself. So uh, so like I said, I mean, it's it, we could talk about this topic for a long time. It's it's not easy. It's very it's, it can be a challenge, but uh, I would say with with time, people have a tendency to respect what you're doing uh, when when it's been a short period of time there's not as much respect but when when you've been doing it for a longer period of time uh, you get more respect the other example of what you could do is, uh, is is put on your own social gathering uh, and invite them into your world where they can get experience your world and uh, and you know, brother Air, he did a little bit of that, uh, and there's some other people that I saw that would kind of do that, where they might have a, uh, they would cook a meal for somebody or invite somebody over, and you know, and give them some some of the food. You know, and brother kind of did that with me because I learned how to cook <laughs> over at brother Air's house, because uh, I never I didn't know how to cook before practicing mucus's diet, which was kind of good because I didn't have a bunch of bad habits, but um, if you invite them into your home and you and you got some juice or you got fruit or you make uh, and, and with and when you do that really make some of those transition menus that are very filling and tasty I mean, that's where you get out you know have a big salad maybe the 100 percent wheat spaghetti kind of stuff uh, you know the, the 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 toast and maybe even you know the even the vegan that's where you get some of those vegan options out there but but put it together uh, you know with the I mean I used that soy butter for a couple you know for some years in the early part of my diet so uh, you can explore that even if you're not eating those things you can make the meal so that they're like full where they leave where they had basically mostly mucus free meal uh, stuff like the baked acorn squash works really good uh, you know the you know the baked sweet potato of course that's a sta- that's kind of a staple but uh, spaghetti squash you know these kind of things with a big salad uh, and, and some toast I mean people, I don't care how much mucus and pus they used to eating, they will eat that and be satisfied at least for an hour, <laughs> you know, and then maybe, then, then that meat addiction will start popping up where they're like, oh man, okay, uh, yeah, that was good, but I'm hungry again, you know. And in order for them to be able to eat that and only that, they'd have to transition and, you know, and kind of, you know, and get the mess out of their system. Uh, but you can ex- introduce them to your world and uh, and that is a uh, uh, you know and that that's a, that's an important you know, important thing I think to uh, that you can invite them in to show you that you are eating and you're eating stuff that tastes good and uh, and you're transitioning and that it's not as strange and, and crazy as, as they think that it might be. So Sam asked, I think this is the final of these questions, uh, where do you see the development and evolution of the mucus and pus going when uh, people start coming together mucus free? So basically when, when people start uh, more and more as the community gets stronger and more and more people start to, uh, uh, I would say when they start to effectively practice the transition diet, you know, and they really start to effectively practice the mucus diet healing system to where there is a... Uh, 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 a consistency and in uh, a steadfastness, you know, that, that can last a while, and it's not just kind sort of a quick little hitting this and you know, and then going going off into something else. Uh, but what I see is uh, it's it, it's gonna it's just gonna grow, and it's gonna grow. You know, I think we have a strong foundation where we have you know people that have been practicing for a while. Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know educated people. That, that's in the camp and, and now with different things that we're coming out with to try to help more people become educated, which I was very passionate about was, you know, some people get real passionate about like, okay, where they f- want to create the community first and then create content. Well, I, my thing was I want to create and build a community around information. So you got to put the information together first, and so that was you know, the annotate all the books, the annotated mucus diet. Now we got the e course, uh, so that was kind of my strategy was let's put the information together and then bring folks in, and uh, and and, ver- and really in, uh, uh, inspire people to try to really become well educated. You know, I like people to really really study, uh, really study the, the the history of these things. You know, is I'll never tell people just that 
just stop believing in nutrition. And I say study the history of it. And if, if you study the history of nutrition and you still are uh, uh, influenced or you still think that those are viable theories, uh, then, then stick with them, then cool. Uh, but I'm, I encourage you to, to just study it. Most people don't know the history. They don't, they don't know nothing about Atwater in the you know in the calorie meter and the history of the calorie theory or the uh uh you know protein theory and all, you know, all this kind of stuff and so i just I, so nobody could say that i'm just telling people not to believe in certain things i'm encouraging you to do that study do that history and 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 cross reference different sources don't just check one source out and just don't read wikipedia uh, look at those sources. If you go to Wikipedia, check out those original books. Look at some. Look at older textbooks, not the new ones. The new ones don't are, are very compromised. But if you find some textbooks like in the '60s and the '70s, in terms of the history, I find that those are sometimes uh, uh, better and, and tell a more interesting, tell the story a little better than than what has been created in, in some of the more modern kind of history books. But read it all, check it all out. I mean, if you're passionate about that and you really want to interrogate that, and that's the that's the kind of community that I'm I'm trying to foster is a community of uh, I mean almost a scholarly community of practitioners. You know, where there's other uh, these other health communities are based around you know wanting to try to create a, a bunch of different uh, uh, you know, a- athletes or you know, world class Olympic athletes that that eat nothing but fruit or whatever. You know, and that's and that's well and good. But what I want to see is I want to see pe- people that have an intelligence that's just unquestionably unmatched to all these other communities that where 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 we're known for that, where we're known for our logic and our our philosophical analysis and our understanding unique understanding and analysis of, of the human experience uh, uh, cultural kind of uh, commentary I mean that that's what I've been interested in because uh, you know uh, you know interested in art you know uh, un- able to understand art uh, because that's going to help you with your practice if you can understand how art works and the process of becoming an artist then you can and you apply that to practice in the mucus diet healing system, then uh, you are better off in terms of an understanding of, of transitioning uh, because uh, mucus diet healing system is an art form. You know, it's not a science, uh, and there really is no, it, even when they try, like Eric pointed out, they try, they've tried to create scientific nutrition, uh, but you can't, you know, you can't, you can't, because everybody's situation is different, their physiology is different, where they live is different. All of these different factors come into play. Uh, and so you, you, can, you can't just get a spreadsheet and say, okay, all these, this is what you need, all this different stuff. It's like people are living lives and not everybody has the same access to fresh fruits and vegetables that everybody else has. So when you're trying to deal with a comprehensive lifestyle approach and, and system to this, you got to be able to take into account all of these different factors. Not everybody can afford organic or, or, or is in a place that sells organic stuff all the time. So you can't shame people uh, uh, be just because they and make them feel like they can't practice the diet or do whatever just because they don't have access to the organic food. We have to understand that we have put ourselves in a, in a compromised position and we got to do our best to transition out of it and, and make better decisions and, and, and make the best decisions that we can uh, a, as we move forward. But in terms of the community, I think that it's the community, I mean, we're at the embryo stages, we're at the beginning of this, this whole movement. And so it's, it's just going to get bigger, uh, stronger, especially, like I said, I'm, I'm interested in, in people, the, the, fun, the people with the foundation that really push things forward being uh, incredibly educated people just un just unquestionable like this person is smart <laughs> they, they got it they at least got that there. i might not agree with what they say but nobody should be questioning the uh the ability to to kind of analyze and understand why it is we're doing what we're doing um and and i think 
if, if we can get to that, then uh, we can we can have a pretty solid group of some you know, some high level practitioners, and that's going to take it to a whole different level. Uh, but what I but you know on a practical side, that's that's kind of my you know that that's part of it. But the, the another part, I want to see a lot more uh, people socializing, and 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 there's and there's type of people that are natural hosts. Uh, and and they and they love you know the like the kind of people that would put together dinner parties or put together little little functions or hey come come hang out at my house we'll have some dinner or whatever and and to do mucus free versions of that the people that practice a mucus diet that have that uh, that ability and that interest in that to create a space that you're inviting people into. And saying, hey, you know, I'm, I'm having a juice party. We're gonna, you know, we have a juice party. And we're gonna watch some movies. We're gonna watch a, a, you know, some funny mucus diet videos or whatever. Starting, starting to have some of these, and I, and I'm encouraging people to do that. Uh, you know, we're having the Arnold Eric Day Fest. That'll be kind of be my, my, uh, uh, you know, kind of addition to that. Uh, and I know there, there's people that are gonna emerge that are much better at that than me in terms of kind of the daily, uh, like I said, that was something that I respected a lot with Gabriel Cousins community and model where he was inspiring uh, and encouraging his people to uh, put together raw food, you know, raw lux and the, the raw food things and invite people into that and say, here, just bring some raw foods. We're going to get together and we're just going to we're going to talk. We'll listen to music. We'll talk about diet and physiology, just kind of have these little salon sessions. And uh, and so I'd like to see that uh, as I think that's that's the net. It's one of the next phases. Uh, you got the first phase, which to me is that that Get, getting the uh, that analysis together and having people that are practicing the diet first of all, uh, brother Eric would probably say people that are actually practicing it and studying it. Uh, but then you get into the point where now, now we're now we're socializing and we're opening the doors and saying, hey, come on in. You know, we're not that. What we're doing is not that strange as you would think. It's not all way out there. It's you know we're not telling you not to eat. You can eat plenty. Eric even says that you you know you. Sometimes people don't eat enough. You want to eat enough to actually create that a good bowel movement. But um, uh, we get that social dynamic happening, and I think that's that's going to take it to a whole nother level because that that's been one of the reasons why things have moved slower, which has been fine for me because I, I wanted I, I didn't want to lose control of and have the con- the community sort of just run off the rails because we've seen that with a number of these community over the past five years. I mean, the, I mean, I, I don't, I know they still post videos, but the, you know, the 80, 10, 10 and the, you know, 30 bananas a day thing, that was all the rage. I mean, that was all anybody talked about for like a good year and a half, two years. Uh, and that, and they had a huge community and following. And, and, I, and, and I don't know the status of, of where all that stuff is now, but I know that it's not as influential as it once was, and, and I have a feeling that the community is not as strong as it was. So it was one of those things where it grew uh, like, like, a, like a match. You know, it grew bright and kind of loud immediately, but then fa- you know, kind of faded out. Um, and, uh, and I guess if you some of y'all that's still a part of that, you could, you could inform us uh, or inform me on, on the status of, of what's happening there. But, uh, but that's just an example. Uh, even with the the original, the original Dr. Morris group, that thing, the, that that on Facebook, that was it was the original one was shut down because it run amok. They just let everybody in the group, and you had a bunch of people in there that hadn't studied anything that are gets given advice to to everybody in the group, and, uh, and then it, it just got to a point where just so much misinformation in there it wasn't wasn't helping anybody and there was p- putting people at risk because they were getting bad bad advice and so uh, I didn't want that to happen with the mucus free I, I would rather go slow and let people catch on slowly but be educated with it so that there's a better chance of of a sustained practice uh, and it's been hard because even though there's been a number of people that I've told to slow down slow down your transition uh, don't be obsessed about trying to be raw, you know, all raw and all that kind of stuff. Uh, yet 
they, uh, uh, there's, you know, there's people that that's refuse to listen to me <laughs> and they would just be like, nah, I'm gonna be raw, I'm gonna do this long fast, I'm gonna do all this kind of stuff. And, uh, and, and some of those folks aren't with us anymore. Uh, well, I mean, they're, they're living, but I mean, they're not practicing the diet. And so, um, so anyway, so, but as far as the future, I think that the future's bright. Uh, you know, what Brother Air often says, and, and I've been saying, you know, one of our kind of long-term goals is uh, to get, get together a mucus diet center uh, and kind of mucus diet village someplace where we can really, you know, really help people and be able to get real deep into some of the, uh, the stuff that we can't do, you know, now, just, just, that you, just some stuff you just can't do over Skype or over the phone uh, in terms of some of some of the case study the cases that, that people work with that uh, so that's uh, that stuff so we got a lot, a lot there's a lot planned uh, but a, a lot of yeah you know, I, I see a lot of good things that's gonna be coming uh, coming down the pike real soon I know so I thank you for your question and so that's the end of those questions so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a quick break and uh, we are gonna watch, uh, I'm gonna put on a video of uh, t- uh, uh, Takora. This was, uh, you can find this on the channel, this was, but this will give you an introduction to Takora so you can get excited about her at the, at the Air Day Festival. Uh, I mean, just a wealth of knowledge uh, of the mucus diet experiences and so uh, that is, you know, that, that'll be exciting. So check this out, I'm gonna take a little break and then I'm gonna come back and I'll take a look at see what what questions you guys have for me over in the in the live chat, and uh, and then we will uh, uh, then yeah we will we'll go from there. So <laughs> all right, so let me uh, bring this on up. To be with the core is like still plugging in, you know, that information. We equal speed. This is a sister that has been a practitioner of the mucus diet healing system for, uh, I don't know, it's like unknown years. She, <laughs> she won't tell us how long, but it's, it's been a while. Let's talk about being pregnant while practicing the mucus diet. I started practicing Lucas's diet with my uh, third child. So during my uh, childbearing days, I would do primarily um, what I love doing is plums and strawberries, uh, with the vine fruits. Um, plums grow off the tree, but strawberries, grapes, um, uh, cucumbers. I ate so many cucumbers and, you know, I just, just basically lived off of cucumbers. To feed these children. And so I would buy mass fruits. I would buy plain vegetation. And we even co-opted with certain families that were, that were vegetarians. We have five families, everybody had put up $20 and $30. And we would get cases of apples, oranges, and so forth. And the children could even go home with fruits and vegetables. These are, these are detox body cleansers and cell cleansers, which I started doing. And you can see that around my nose and my lip area because I wanted to get deep into my cells. And when I started doing, because I would do dandelions off the line, and I would like pop them so like- these are herbs? Oh, the herbs. Okay. Well, what I would do is I would take an enema, if I'm going through something, you know, say for instance, um, certain yoga postures. This one in particular, it took me years to like get to this stage and to be able to put my leg and arm up. But it would be, it would be some obstruction and I would feel like pain after I done sat and held it for a length of time and I would take the salve after I took my enema and I would put it in a platter area and go to rest, it's completely gone. Uh, these are products that you live by. 
Yeah, I live with these every day. Yeah, all the this pretty is colors. so and... attractive. Yeah, you yeah. You know, a lot yeah. of people, you know, as a matter of fact, about four days ago, I sold them like nine books. And I'm not even going out there, you know, hustling like, you know, people, who, you know, my brother and sister doing the bean pass, and I'm not doing that. They just see me, and it's like, so what you doing, and how you been? I was like, you got to check this out, because I might find a passage. This one in particular, not that I have a favorite, but thus far, this is like one of my favorites, because these are people that are like everyday people, and these brothers and sisters have literally transformed their yeah, families. Sharing their stories. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, oh, let me tell you, it's yeah. just off. The Richter scale. Ignore. We're looking to see what immortality really looks and feel like. Those things have to be taught. Death was taught to us. We didn't know a darn thing about death. They have it in their minds that everything that they think and do is forgiven. And it is forgiven, with the exception that you do the work. This is the real work, what immortality looks like. There's a passage in the book of Psalms, and it says, um, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This is the fullness. This is the epitome of what life is bringing. This is what I want to say to uh, practitioners. Since the core is uh, a person that me and Professor Spare really have the highest regard for in, in terms of just uh, living this life. And, uh, you know, it's like somebody to plug into.
his sisters. That was the uh, Dear Dr. Eret by Charles Lloyd from his uh, album Warm Waters, which was uh, released in 1971. <clears throat> so uh, Charles Lloyd is, you can uh, check our YouTube channel and you can find a few videos of, there's a radio show where Brother Air talks with Charles Lloyd about the mucus diet. And then uh, there's a, a little short documentary that I put together when we had met him in Chicago. I believe that was Chicago. Um, and he was part of the inspiration for the, the Breatharian Ensemble, which is the, the jazz group that, uh, that me and uh, Brother Air have. And, uh, and so he, you know, he'd kind of been undercover. He had actually, you know, he started practicing Nugas' diet from what I know, you know, kind of late in the 60s, early 70s, around this time, and kind of, I guess, late, was it 1968? I don't know, a couple of different years I heard, but, you know, he started practicing, and then he left the scene where he recorded, it's like this, that album, The, the Warm Waters, was, was one of the, uh, uh, you know, one of the last albums that he did before he <clears throat> kind of went on a like almost 12 year sabbatical or something. It was like the number of years where he had left the music because he was he was real popular uh, at the time. He was one of the, if not the first jazz group to play along with some of the really popular rock groups. So his group would 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 perform before some of the real popular, you know, the Who and all those different type of groups back in the, uh, you know, in the late 60s. And uh, so he was well known within kind of even pop culture. And, uh, but he left the scene. He just said, I'm, and he went and really practiced the mucus diet and, and, and just fasted and, and some other stuff. And he had, uh, when we met him, the first time that I met him with Brother Air, he said that he, he was up in the, in the mountains of Switzerland or something, just fasting and, and eating nothing but dried fruit and just uh, just this kind of thing, and um, so so he's a he's a heavy, heavy cat uh, and, and doesn't talk a whole lot. There is a story from the seventies I heard where, that somebody forget somebody had told me a story about him where at a concert he he kind of. He told everybody in the audience, like, like y'all stop eating, <laughs> just whatever, like, just stop eating the crap. You know, I don't know what what, the, what exactly he said, but I mean, that was, uh, you know, now he doesn't really talk about it. He just, he focuses on the music and just kind of that, that kind of thing now. But, um, or at least publicly, you know, at, at his, as it shows, he doesn't, uh, you know, tell, like tell the audience that they need to, <laughs> you know, they need to be eating a certain way. But uh, I got a chance, you know, it was maybe a couple years ago, I uh, uh, went, he came through Columbus where I, where I'm, where I live. And uh, so I got a chance to, to go give him a copy of all the books because he's kind of been there since, since he met us and, you know, this whole time. Because he didn't realize that there were folks that, that knew about him, you know, and practicing the diet and that was inspired by uh, that that part of his career and so uh, he was kind of pleasantly surprised and I got a chance to you know it had been a couple years after I had the mucus diet all of all of our books out you know I was able to give him a copy so that that felt real good um, so uh, so yeah I wanted to answer a few questions here before we uh, before we close it down so I don't I don't know if you can read very well I, I tried to put the uh, Put put it up there on the on the screen, but so let's just go. There's not not too many, so I'll see what I can get here. So there's a little conversation about the e-course. Uh, Grateful girl says, anyone else enjoying the e-course? I'm very excited to learn as much as I can. And Kristen says, yes, definitely excited about it. I've been able to watch the intro video so far. Julie says, I'm loving the e-course. And uh, so I just really, really appreciate. I just, I just appreciate that so much. I mean, I really put everything I had into, into that e-course. You, if you go to old enough videos, you'll hear me first talking about the e-course in 2013, and the core PowerPoint presentations were actually made back then in 2013, and that was really before everything went to high definition. Uh, so I'm kind of glad, you know, everything like these kind of things work out how they're supposed to work out and they are released, you know, you're able to release them when you're supposed to. And so I just, 
I never, I just didn't get stressed about it because it's something that I'd had in my head that I've really wanted to do for a long time. And it, it just, it literally took years to put everything together and, and I would put, you know, one piece of the puzzle and then there'd be something else to do. So I really just constructed this over a long period of time. And, uh, you know, and I really stand behind it. I think if you, you go through all those lessons and you, and you go through the book along with those lessons and you, and you check out those review questions and you just really engage with that uh, and, and, and you stick with it over the you know, two months that, that the course is, a two month long course, uh, then you, I mean, you're gonna know more about the mucus's diet than most people that even you know that just read the book or casually practice that kind of stuff you because you will have engaged and immersed uh you know the the and then the thing about educational process you know is that i love the immersive process and that's why i like courses you know because i'm kind of a you know i'm an academic animal to a certain extent you know where i've really enjoyed college and the college process to you know especially higher the, 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 the higher education, like the graduate school level stuff, to me, that's really when you start to get the freedom to really study what you want to study, you know, and you're given the kind of the intellectual tools to be able to dissect uh, ideas and concepts and philosophies and, and just really kind of explore things uh, going on the journey you want to go on, whereas, you know, high school and elementary school, most schools, you don't have that opportunity to, to do what you want to do and study what you want to study. You're at the whim of whatever, whoever built that curriculum, you have to deal with that. But, you know, higher education, you, you can kind of build your own curriculum. Uh, at least that was my experience. You know, I that gets into a whole, you know, we start, start talking about academia and stuff that gets into a whole complicated kind of discussion. But uh, But anyway... I think it's good, you know, that any any time that you can immerse yourself into what it is you're studying like that, you're, you know, you're just going to get so much out of it. It's such a benefit to doing that. Um, let see, green tea. Hello, everybody. Well, hello, green tea. <laughs> uh, what is meant by one-sided meat eater? When I say one-sided meat eater, or when Eric says it, he is referring to uh, somebody that eats most mostly mostly meat you know for example you know i personally know some people that don't eat any vegetables uh really never have any fruit but every day the, in the morning they they might eat some 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 bacon and eggs in the afternoon maybe they have a bologna sandwich in the evening they might have a you know a piece of steak or something like that that would be like a one-sided meat eater it's not that they eat nothing but meat they might have a little bit of, you know, some starch in there, some wheat products or some potatoes or something like that. But uh, there are people that really eat heavily, you know, mo like, mo you know, kind of a meat based kind of diet. And uh, so that that's kind of what that is, you know, and that's different from what we might call a starchitarian, which would be somebody a lot of vegetarians and nowadays the, the, the vegans. Uh, that are not practicing the mucus's diet get into this kind of starchitarianism where they are overeating a lot of starch, you know, a lot of starchy foods and a lot of that stuff, the, the packaged foods and all that kind of stuff, they, they, they're getting into a lot of that. And so that's, uh, that's a problem. But yeah, so that's what that means, one-sided meat eater. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. And producer Chris. Got some cold pressed apple juice. All right, well that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, uh, Maddie Cakes Muhammad, peace. What's going on, man? Oh, uh, see, great job and quality today. Well, I'm very happy. This last <laughs> week we had some issues, so I'm glad today it's uh, coming through pretty good. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Since you spoke about seeds, I've been eating and chewing papaya seeds, and they. Uh, seem to help clean the stomach and GI tract. Would you agree? I uh, heard they kill parasites too. Thanks, brother. So I haven't personally experimented too much with with the papaya seeds. I mean, I've heard that too, uh, and so uh, so that's one thing where I wouldn't talk negatively or for it because I, I that's one of the few things that I haven't actually experimented with and tried uh, on my own physiology, uh, in particular the, the, the papaya seeds. But I could see how they could they could potentially have that that quality of uh of really moving through and there's some there's a number of seeds that do that uh 
uh, that, that move through the GI tract and, and have the ability to kind of bring a little bit of waste with it. Um, so, uh, so that'll be, I'll have to, I'll, I actually had to check that out. And cause it's, it's rare when I get one of these and I haven't tried something, but yeah, that's one thing that I haven't, uh, cause we don't have a lot of good papayas here. You know, there's, there's a couple places that sell papaya and there's a, there's a Mexican market that I go to and stuff, but I don't know, they never, I like the mangoes at the Mexican market, but the papayas always look bad. Like they're not, they're, you know, they're, they're not right you know they, and they don't smell right they're like they're a little too far they're either they're either not ripe enough or too ripe and it's hard for you know i rarely find a good papaya that's like okay this is perfect whereas you know i can go get a whole case of mangoes over there and, and they'd be you know on point um uh, <clears throat> but yeah so you so you had to uh yeah you have to let us know uh, you know know about your your experiences with the papaya seeds like that See, Valerie, Professor Spira, how can I differentiate between a healing crisis or an intolerance to the nightshade family? I've been relying on tomato and onion stews in order to get through the early transition. You got con constant joint pain that's affecting you. So what you want to do when you want to uh, evaluate that kind of thing is, is cut it out for a while and try to find something else, you know, find another transitional crutch. And that's where you, you know, kind of go into the list or go into the store and look and, and, and experiment with some other items. And so, and I've done that at different times where I would I cut out tomatoes or I'd cut out certain vegetables. And uh, if and it might've been, you know, if I noticed that something was, seemed like something might be giving me gas, it's like, okay, is this gas because of waste that's being eliminated in my system or is the gas because physiologically um, not tolerating this particular item anymore. So the way that I would always test that out would be to cut that item out for a while and use something else or maybe do a short fast, get some enemas in there. And if, if I noticed that uh, that would go away, then I would stop eating that item. That's actually how I stopped eating uh, wheat products. It's been several years since I've, I've had wheat products and I used to, I didn't have a problem doing what was out of the mucus diet book. So I'd have the, uh, it got less and less over the years, but periodically I would still have, not maybe not as much the toast, but I'd get the wheat tortillas and toast them, and I'd have that with the salad, uh, and that'd be part of the meal. But then I started noticing that the wheat wasn't, you know, I could just tell, I was like, I don't think that this is do doing well anymore in my physiology. I think it's just starting to irritate uh, more uh, more than 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 eliminate well in those early days. You know, I did that burnt toast or not burnt, but you know, just well toasted wheat bread. It it would eliminate fine with you know very little you know acid reflux or anything like that. But over the years, as I got a little bit cleaner and it was, I would get to the point where I started to notice that those things did not move out of me uh, like I wanted them to. So, so that's all I would say is just cut, cut those items out, find some other things, explore, you know, and look at it as a, as a fun thing, like an opportunity to check out some other stuff. Maybe if, you, if, the, if you're thinking, you're suspecting that the, some of the nightshades might be not hitting your physiology right, then, uh, you know, check, check out some of the other vegetables or, uh, you know, go into the squashes or, you know, something like that and, uh, and, and kind of see, see how that rolls. Uh, let's see, Kristen he said, you've answered my question pretty well. Thank you for your perspective. I'm ready for the challenge. Luckily, one side, uh, one, uh, one side effect of healthy living is a positive outlook. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's how you want to think. Exactly. Uh, what's the best way to start <clears throat> the diet? The best way to start the diet, read the Mucus of Diet Healing System book. As all, we always say that, read the book. Uh, so check out, you can check out M Mucus, uh, uh, the annotated version that I came out with. Uh, uh, you can find that on Amazon or on mucusfreelife.com if you want to read the, uh, it's, t it's really not the original version. Um, it's the 1994 version from Eric Literature. Read that. You know, I don't care, you know, read uh, whatever, however you get there, you know, check out Eric's work. 
and uh, and, re and really read the book and and and, uh, and then read it again, you know, and kind of study and then start practicing, uh, kind of focus in on the transition diet lessons, you know, fi lesson 15, 16, 17. Focus in on those lessons, and um, and really uh, uh, start to experiment with some of those menus and some of those recipes and. Uh, uh, get an anima bag, and I would, you know, invite you to, you know, do, you know, do a couple animas and check that out, and, you know, and that's that's really where you start. You know, check first, check the book out. You know, don't don't rely on what is being said just on, you know, in the videos or in, in the stuff uh, online. You you really want to read the book, and then uh, then kind of go from there. Let's see, and then someone. Oh, well, that was. <laughs> Uh, Marche probably said what I just said. Uh, in the book, there is a transition diet. You can is where you can start. You really have to read the book. It tells you. <laughs> there you go. All right. That's, uh, that was that was dealt with in in the ch in the chat. Uh, Sergio, can you reverse hair loss with the mucus's diet? Uh, I've I've seen it with some people, and then I've seen with other people uh, that they haven't haven't yet. And so it's, it's not something that's just automatic. It depends on your physiology and, and where your weaknesses are and where your, your cr most chronic issues are at. So I, I know there's case studies and I know some people who uh, had had hair loss and they started growing their hair back with the, you know, on the diet and uh, going down this path. And then there's some other people that because especially because that was something they were focused on they was like really wanting to grow their hair and and oftentimes that is not a good way to approach it where where that would be the last thing that your body heals <laughs> for you it's you know it's it, again we go back to where you let go and let the body do what it's going to do and 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 the body is going to there's a body intelligence that especially in healing that where it kind of it, it's almost like a road map that the body already knows what it's it, once you get out of the way it's gonna it's gonna deal with different stuff now is my experience where uh you know i i you know, i used to have feet problems and I, and, and i don't even talk I, and i didn't even think to talk about those a lot in in the test my testimonials and stuff uh there was a number of things that i had that i that i didn't you know that i haven't even talked about that much but uh but i used to have foot problems and it took a my I didn't really uh, and they had to do with like flat footedness and pain in my arches and that kind of stuff and um, and some of that the pain kind of went away early on but there's some of the re, like actual reconstruction of my feet I felt myself going through that years after practicing diet you know I was on do, kind of doing a long fast and I could f almost feel as if the, the bones in my feet were, were realigning properly uh, because I, uh, my suspicion is because I was heavy growing up, that kind of that kind of compromised uh, my feet a little bit in the way that uh, you know things kind of grew a certain way, and so I had some problems, you know. And I, I when I was in by seventh grade, you know, by age 11, 12, uh, I had excruciating pain in my arches and my heels. And so that's when I started wearing uh, foot appliances, and uh, and so I didn't truly, totally heal all of that until I was probably ten or eleven years into practicing the diet, and I could feel the bones in my feet doing doing something, and the pain, you know, went away. Uh, I went through a, an, a knee elimination where my knee hurt for. A long time. It was, you know, long. It would. It was. T a lot of people would get scared that it was that long, but it was. It was some months, and uh, and my knee was like, and it had, and part of that had to do with with my feet and stuff, and uh, and and. But I just I kept pushing through it, and I got into the fasting, and then I I learned some. I did learn some exercises and some stretches to kind of help uh, along the way with some of the with some of the pain and stuff. But uh, I have to credit. The fasting for really getting over that because I don't have that pain now, you know. So anytime when people talking about oh well this you know detox is a myth and you can't heal, it's like, I mean there's so many different things like that that and those are just minor stories. I mean you I could just start going down a list of different ailments and things 
because uh, oftentimes, sometimes once you heal something, you for, kind of forget about it, and you because you're on to the next. Because then there there is always something else. You know, that's the one thing that sometimes people don't like because your body there's something else to work on. You know, and so you you kind of deal with one thing. What's next? And the body, like I said, that body intelligence. You can control that and the speed of that a little bit by deciding on how you know, on, on how you transition. And so if you transition slower, then you it can it can be a a, 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 a I say a less painful, but it can just be a more pleasant experience as opposed to if you're really trying to just you know, hardcore f- you know fruit and raw and this and long term fasting and you're trying to rush through it then uh, you can run into a lot of problems and, and it's not uh, what they say on that South Park episode it's like not gonna have a good time and uh, yeah so so anyway but yeah I mean I, it's possible I've seen the hair, hair loss uh, be improved but then I've also seen cases where it, it took a long time or uh, because of what it, it, the, the chronicness of the genetic weakness or whatever was there where it just didn't happen, at least on the timeline that they wanted. But uh, I definitely think that it is uh, possible and seeing that it's possible. Uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus too much on any time when you have those kind of pet ailments, you don't want to be a, become obsessed with that where you're, where, where you're really focused too much on it. You just focus on the transition focus on your crave you know, you know uh, uh, dealing with any cravings that you that you have you know i like to actually focus on cravings to a certain extent not to obsess about them but to be aware of them and then then strategize on how i'm going to construct menus based on well what am i craving that i shouldn't be you know what am i craving that i really uh need to you know get away from or uh, or if I'm overeating, if there's a certain food item that I have a tendency to overeat, then then observing it and then seeing what kind of changes I can make systematically to instead of trying to just cut something out cold turkey or just try to use willpower, how can I, you know, kind of manipulate the menu in a different way so that I can uh, so so that I can kind of ease myself off of or e or, or ease myself into a change. Let's see. If a person has trouble digesting cooked or raw fruit and, ve- and veggies and is very thin, any suggestions? Um, well, I mean, my my uh, question there would be what I first want to know what that person is just eating. Like, what what can that person eat that is if if you're not eating fruits and vegetables, is there some other foods that are digesting better or eliminating better? Uh, but you know, in those cases, sometimes you gotta you gotta hit the groom salads, and uh, you know, may, you know maybe you know check out the enema situation if if there's too much gunk or something that's built up down there. Uh, but you know, I can't I can't say definitively. That's kind of one of those cases where to give a, a the best advice, I'd have to know a lot more details uh, about the situation. But just generally speaking. Uh, you you know you 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 have the you got the enema as a tool you have uh, as you explore different food combinations and you find what helps you eliminate you know one thing Eric recommended that I've recommended to a lot of people is to try uh, eating uh, dried fruit fruit followed by juicy fruit so if you have uh, some something like prunes uh, or figs and then follow it up with some juicy fruit you know some apples or blackberries or something like that. Uh, if, you, if you eat enough of it, it, it has the potential to cause a decent elimination uh, and kind of, as Eric calls it, a natural laxative. Uh, so that kind of thing could be explored. But, uh, but really, with, with, with your combination salads, you want to make sure that you have enough rough material uh, that, that's going to, you know, the chopped celery and, and the chopped carrot and that kind of stuff that's going to kind of go through that. And that's, on, that's the, the original Eric combination salad. And you kind of recommend some of those kind of things. But, uh, so, but I would just work, work the system just, just still, even if it's not because it might not be perfect right away. Uh, and it might take some time to get the digest. You know, there's a number of clients I work with where, 
you know, it took weeks of, of just like, all right, eat the, you know, kind of go, go down this, tr try this, to get to the point where the digestion was normal, you know, where it was flowing uh, from, because some of them had come from where they had high protein diets and their, and their digestion had been shot from that. And so we had to kind of ease in. There was some other people that had, uh, there was a raw foodist that had kind of depleted whatever, <laughs> anything that would help them digest food was, was gone because they, the, the, the way that they were raw foods was problematic, you know, so I actually had to transition them on to cooked foods, uh, which was, which was challenging for them at first, you know, so, but, uh, but those are the methodologies uh, at play uh, in that type of situation. Uh, so cauliflower makes you gassy, this is Sergio, when steamed. Uh, is there a way to make it more digestible? Uh, I mean, you could try baking, baking them. Uh, that might uh, uh, be the baked cauliflower option. Might be a little less gas, but but those some of those things uh, that are a little more because I didn't do a whole lot of. I, I did broccoli a lot longer than I did uh, cauliflower because I found that cauliflower didn't really eliminate all that well. So it was, it was useful in the early days, but uh, I kind of got away from the cauliflower and I found that the combination of, uh, for me, the, uh, I would have cooked broccoli with uh, steamed broccoli and cabbage. Then that got to a point that wasn't eliminating well and I, ch I went to steamed broccoli and, uh, and collard greens, you know, and then that uh, you know, I rarely, it's been a long time since I've had broccoli, you know, I kind of got away from the whole broccoli thing. And, uh, uh, and I find that things like the acorn squash, baked acorn squash, uh, and, and, the, and the zucchini and that kind of stuff, uh, the, the cooked versions of those have a tendency to be less, uh, usually be less gassy than if you're, you know, getting into those cruciferous kind of things and so um, so yeah so that would be something to something to check out let's see grateful girl it has been suggested to make veggie soup with potatoes and eat only that in applesauce for short period to uh, to heal digestive tract don't want to clog it up more I, I wouldn't go in that direction as far as the you know I agree with Eric on soup uh, in fact, maybe I'll bring up the uh, uh, I'll bring up where Eric talks about soup. I think that's a good uh, that's a good uh, good commentary here. So Eric says, uh, "Do not drink liquids of any kind with meal." Well, this act, this might be where he, actually Fred Hirsch says this, but it's it's basically the Eric methodology. But he says. Uh, do not drink liquids of any kind with the meal. Liquids of any kind, including soups, interfere with proper digestion of the meal. At least 30 minutes should elapse before drinking, both before and after eating. So I would not go in the direction of that. that you know, that, that mixture, I don't know. I don't know who, <laughs> I don't even know. I'll, I haven't heard that combination before. I've heard stuff like that, but uh, I wouldn't. Uh, uh, I wouldn't recommend going in that in that type of direction. That's that's uh, yeah, I'm not sure about about that one. Uh, but like I said, if I was going to do anything, I would explore the uh, the dried fruit followed by juicy fruit, and you can find that in the Mucus's Diet book that's talked about. Uh, and then and then just working the system, working uh, and maybe staying away from the cruciferous kind of stuff, but check out some of the squashes and that kind of thing and uh and, and kind of explore that and so uh so yeah so okay thanks you say uh so much for the answer enemas do help yeah yeah the enemas and and you said that you're skinny so i'm going to assume that you are what we would call a a lean type uh you know air uh, and, and uh, lean type we've also come to call it uh uh, a, a uric acid type, but Eric actually didn't call it that. Uh, let's see if I can 
let me, let me actually read this because this is always, I think, important to come back to. So uh, in the uh, lesson four of the diagnosis, it says fat and lean type. So he basically divides physiologies into two, cla two large scale classifications. Uh, and this, it, 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 it's a, and, and take it as a philosophy. You don't have to take it as some kind of scientific thing. It's, it's, a, it's a, a philosophy, a different way to look at the body. But when you look at it, it makes sense. And you can, there is sort of a scientific uh, kind of piece behind it that could be provable. But uh, just look at it as, you know, take it for what it is. But I found it to be very helpful. Uh, so Eric says the bodily mechanism of the fat type is on average mechanically more obstructed because he or she is in general an overeater of starchy foods. In the lean type there is more physiological chemical interference with the organism such as one being in general a one-sided meat eater a uh, condition which produces a, especially much acidity, uric acid, and other poisons and pus. So when you are putting in fruits and vegetables, and if you're very overly acidic uh, in, in your gut, that's th those, uh, those mucus-free foods are gonna come into contact with all of that acid, and that's going, it's gonna basically be a war in your body, in your stomach, you, you will be engaged in battle. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of a war. And uh, or this is just a way to think about it, but it feels like that where it's like you, you is because you those acids, it if if your body is used to dealing with the meat, if the, you eat the meat, you feel fine. It just all those acids get break that meat down uh, as much as it can. Of course, that that, that slime and there's all these other issues that that's uh, along with that. But it's it you you're not going to feel that kind of gas now. You have this mucus-free food that's going in there and is creating uh, uh, all uh, is, is neutralizing and, and and creating all of this uh, neutralizing the acids and part of the the waste product of this process chemically is there's going to be some gas and uh, so some of that that gas is a way of the body uh, neutralizing and eliminating these poisons uh, when you have a, a, a lean type. The physiology this is why I recommend people with lean types to even take longer with their transition even be a little bit more gentle and find uh, if you and, and try to find some vegetables or some combinations of things that uh, that that have the least amount of gas but it's but if you have a that type of physiology I mean any anybody's gonna have some gas but I've just I've seen people with lean physiologies that particularly can have some painful gas and so that becomes one of the, uh, you know, I mean, really, you know, when you look at it from one perspective, that that's that's one reason why that that's hard. Where in 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 society where everything is backward, the person that's very thin but can eat anything and not gain any weight is given a uh, is given a a a, 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 hat, a you know a, a thumbs up and a crown hat. And say, good, you're great. You know, you can eat whatever you want, and you, and you stay skinny because there's this obsession with with skinniness, you know, in society, and this kind of just or just obsession with weight in general. Um, but the what happens when it's time to try and deal with chronic illnesses or go down a more healing diet path? Uh, now. It's it, it might be a lot more difficult to 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 get into that, and so that's kind of where that that karma of it is. Where on one hand, someone might have been able to just you know you know like the people that eat that do the uh, uh, you know, I always think of the folks that <clears throat> that do the uh, what are they called the. Uh, uh, like the eating contest where you have, let me look up one of these uh, hot, uh, I, I have a video on that. Uh, but let me just to show you what I'm talking about. If you look at the, the physiology of, of people that, a lot of people nearly that do Nearly four minutes this. remaining in this competition. The table enders now not even in focus because the entire world, the entire free world is focused on these two 
So these are folks that, that are professional eaters and they they train they train themselves to be able to just eat uh, you know hundreds of hot dogs in a, in, a, in a sitting and you'll notice oftentimes the, the folks that win this now this Joey Chestnut he's won a lot of these and then this other cat he's you know he uh, I used to <laughs> I used to be kind of I would be interested in these uh, these just, just fascinated me just physiology physiologically but you don't see a lot of really overweight fat guys up there on the stage they're skinny folks so this is the lean physiology that we're talking about um, now of course this is just the, the the insane pus run amok now look at all these skinny I mean there's very few look at all those skinny people that and, and, and they're the ones that competitive the com so-called competitive eat maybe you get one guy and he's not even that fat but I mean maybe he's more of a mucus type but all, all these folks these are all uh, you know mostly kind of lean types of physiology and uh, and they can kind of train themselves they got so much acid in their gut so they can just just get get all this this garbage I mean you know hot dogs is you, you already know <laughs> you already know that that that's some straight mess but uh, you know they're able to train themselves to do that uh, what was I gonna show uh, I forgot <laughs> I forgot what it was. it was another point that I was gonna make but uh, uh, but yeah so that's that's something that you oh that that's what it was I was gonna uh, to, another way to demonstrate this is uh, if you do Atkins diet before and after type of type of pictures uh, you will see so the way the Atkins diet is basically you, you eat uh, uh, you know like carb free uh, you know it's kind of like a one-sided meat type of or a type of diet and I don't know I'm, I'm just how many but just we take this for instance so if this person practiced uh, uh, if, if this person practiced Atkins diet, if that's really what this is, if this is accurate, uh, what this person actually did was transform their physiology from what Eric calls a fat type into a lean type by way of, enter, of, of adding great amount of physical chemical interference into the physiology with the purpose of, of losing weight, but losing weight at the expense of long-term health and vitality. Uh, and I've worked with a couple of people that had done Atkins and, and they, yeah, they lost weight, but they also lost the ability in some cases to, to digest food. And so, uh, so but, that, but physiologically speaking, when you adapting something in real life that you can see these people, and this is, re this is and, and, and this is the explanation for that, the, and the Arnold Aird explanation for why somebody could eat a, a predominantly meat-based diet, start off kind of heavy, and then lose, uh, lose quite a bit of weight is because you are, they are uh, acidifying the body uh, and, and creating a situation where now the body is, yeah, it's going to, okay, you burn, you burn some weight, then what? Now, now you might have problems digest, you know, digesting uh, food, or you know, because all that high protein stuff starts to mess with stuff. You can have all, all kinds of other issues uh, that that come up down the road. And uh, so, unless you know, if that if that's the path you want to go on, and, and and you know, more whatever, you know, I'm I'm just saying from what I've seen and, and dealt with people, that was not a smart way to go uh, about it. Where uh, you know, transforming the body from a fat type into a lean type using uh, a, a meat-based diet is, uh, you know, is, is not, not recommended, at least not, not by me. Um, so, let's see if there's any other questions. Uh, Aaron says, mucusless seems more like a response to people hardly using their bodies physically as compared to how the body was designed to survive without creature comforts. Uh, not really, not, not, I'm not sure what you're talking about, <laughs> honestly, here, uh, or what, or the point that you're trying to make. Um, 
Yeah. Let's see. Uh, why would quality matter if you do nothing? You're just living to die regardless. Do, what are you talking about, do? I don't, still don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean, do nothing? Um, I mean, are you trying to say that mucus diet practitioners are not athletic enough or don't you know, climb enough mountains? Or I mean, like I said, I, I, there's plenty of uh, case studies and people that I could turn you on to that are, or that are, you know, highly, you know, on a very high level in terms of athletics and train uh, Olympic hopefuls and, and everything else. I don't know if that's the point you're trying to make. Um, what is this? Uh, why does living healthy matter so much if you just live to die? Oh, well, I mean, if you're coming from that perspective, I mean, we can't really have a conversation. That ain't, you know, when you what's what's important to me is not uh, not having as much pain so for me just personally uh, you know I was 300 pounds before I started practicing the mucus diet and I I used to use a CPAP unit at night where they you know they put oxygen into my into my nose at, at the age of 18 I, I had oxygen at night because I was so uh, 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 so stuffed up. I took pills from from the age of, of seven. Uh, one of the side effects of these pills was nosebleeds. I used to have nosebleeds uh, almost every day of my life until I started practicing the mucus's diet. And so uh, so I mean, you know. I, I hope that you enjoy the show and that you get something from it, but I mean, it sounded like, you know, when, when you're coming at it from that angle, that's, it's irrational. Because I mean, if, if you, if you, because if you're either interested in the path and you see something uh, beneficial from it, you know, or not. I mean, I, because I can get all kinds of testimonials and videos. I could show you, uh, you know, I was going over the other day, the testimonial of, uh, of Dan Hall who was on his, he was basically on his deathbed uh, and somebody gave him Mucus's diet book. And, and now he's, you know, just he, I mean, he had one of the most remarkable transformations on the Mucus's diet uh, that I've ever, ever seen. In fact, is, is me bringing it up. I wanna, I wanna watch this. Just, I'm gonna I'm share this cause this was just so impressive uh, to, uh, to me. And he was on, uh, let me see here. He's got off his CPAP unit for sleep apnea. Uh, where's that picture at? Uh, a couple right, years on. ago, they took the picture raw. All right, here, I'm, I'm going to show this because uh, this is, I don't know, this was just, this blew me away. I'm still, I need to, I need to reach out to Dan and see, I, I like to follow him on, on Facebook and he's, you know, he's a musician. And uh, so he puts up some music stuff. You can find this. I interviewed him. This was kind of an intro to the interview. But you can see the picture on the left where he was, I mean, he, he was, it, I forget exactly, I got it written down there, it was, had a, a you know, heart attack or, st or stroke, and they gave him a pacemaker. So, I mean, if you, you know, they gave him plenty of pills, they gave him a pacemaker. So the one thing that the medical establishment is good at is emergency. You know, maybe not great. Uh, there, we, there was a lot of, there's a lot of things that we could change with, with the understanding that we have about healing. We could enhance what they do in the emergency rooms, but, uh, but that's really where they shine. When you start talking about chronic illness and stuff, they, they treat, you know, they don't, they don't cure anything, you know, and they, and they very rarely, in some cases, the doctors aren't allowed to even talk about diet. You know, they're not even allowed to suggest that maybe you should change your diet a little bit. Um, but uh, in, in this case, uh, I'll, I'll play some of this video here. Uh, thyroid disease, fatty liver disease, uh, a few other things, given a pacemaker. And Dan said, I'm gonna try something else. And he gave Professor Arnold Eretz Mucus Diet Healing System a shot. And not too long after, he lost 120 pounds got off of all of his medications, got off a CPAP unit for sleep apnea, and 
a couple years ago, they took the pacemaker out. The doctor said, eh, you don't really need this anymore. I'd like to share with you a clip of Dan on the morning show where he is sharing his story, doing a little performance. So take a look. For the Joint Fit Club and the induction of its two newest members, both were tired of being overweight and decided to finally do something about it through big changes in their diet and exercise. Yeah, between them, they've lost 300 pounds. And here to tell us all about our newest inductees is today's nutritionist and leader of the Joy Fit Club, <laughs> Joy Pat Pat Bauer. Hi, Hi Joy. Joy. How are so you? like you said, over 300 pounds. That's and amazing. Yeah, so we have two great winners for you. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Let's hear about our other lucky Good person. Good for you. Okay. Look great. So next up, we have Dan Hall. He's 56 years old. He's from Highland, Michigan. So in this picture, he's just about 300 pounds. A couple of years ago, Dan passed out mm -hmm. and his heart stopped working. Wow. They rushed him to the emergency room and he was diagnosed with a fatty liver. They put in a pacemaker, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, put him on medication for everything, plus arthritis, depression. He was a walking time bomb. Right. So he had a choice. Right. He was either going to die or he was gonna do a 180. Right. Well, this guy did a 180. He's off all of his medication. Yep. He's 120 pounds thinner. Let's bring him out. I want to see. Dan? Come on, Dan. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. You want to know Diddy for us, we hear. Yeah. You ready for this? Let's, Let's hear it. Hear it. Yeah. Healthy food is good for you. Maybe I should try some, too. When we eat it, we'll be strong. I keep singing a healthy song. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. You and the amazing terrific. thing is he couldn't play the guitar before he lost all the <laughs> weight. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you guys, congrats to both. Enjoy. Thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you, Joe. So that was. Yeah. So that was, I don't know, I, I was just so impressed with Dan. I mean, that just. <clears throat> I mean, that, that, that's just a super, super transformation, you know, just really, really impressive. Um, and and so, you know, every, everybody has their their reason of why they practice the diet. Some people want to try to feel better. Some people uh, some people come from it to it from a religious background or perspective and they start studying uh, some practices or they study in the Buddha and he was fasting or they look into Genesis 129 in the Bible or they check out the Bhagavad Gita and folks are fa you know th there's people that come from that direction some people come and they just want to feel better uh, so there and, and I don't impose any particular dogmatic belief or ideology in, ter in terms of what you should ultimately become or do because that's unwritten uh, there's some people that are using the diet and they have aspirations of, of wanting to be these, you know, people that fast a long time or, you know, dare I say people that, uh, that, that, li that live on, uh, that live on air and sun. And so, uh, then there's some people that have no interest in that. All they want to do is just, just, just have fun, live a life, feel good, feel light, happy and free. And, and, you know, and not have to deal with a lot of the illnesses and things that, they're, that their parents might have had to deal with. And so everybody has their own reason uh, for doing this, uh, for going down this path. And, uh, and, and so, you know, as far as, far as that goes, when, when, you, with the, when you have that attitude kind of like, um, uh, you know that you're you're gonna die anyway, kind of thing. I mean, that's that's the uh, you know the YOLO kind of you know you only live once sort of uh, uh, you know men mentality. Whereas like ah we're we're all we're all just you know we're all just out here and messing around and you know and we're we're all gonna die anyway. So we might as well just 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 do whatever we want to do. I mean, hey, you know, there's like I said, there's there, there's all kinds of, I mean, there's, we're at a period in history where you have access to everything. If you want to go, if you want to win a, uh, a, a, a hot dog eating contest, nobody's stopping you from going down the hot dog road. You can be, become a famous hot dog eating contender. Uh, you can be a football player. You can be a magician. You can do, I mean, you can do, you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, if, if you're somebody that is of the opinion that uh, that uh, that 
that health that health is important and that it's that that we can be a better humanity some people could care less some people could care less if humanity evolves or becomes better or lives up to some philosophical ideal uh, and I understand that and uh, some people very happy with how things are I'm not you know I'm I'm gonna do everything I can to change this nasty, filthy, degenerate uh, thing that's out here, uh, where people are in a lot of pain unnecessarily, and uh, and so I think that Eric's message and the transition diet and the mucus diet healing system is kind of a key, uh, you know, a key way to 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 confront that, and. Um, let me, uh, and I'll show, now this, this is a clip from my, uh, it's actually a clip from the first video of the Mucus's Diet e-course. And, uh, and I'm, t I'm talking a little bit about my, my past, and I think I've, I've tried playing some of this last week, and it's, it's up on the, on the screen, but uh, I'll, I'll play a little bit of this, and so you can kind of get my backstory because that kind of does tell the story when you see, you know, a lot of my, I mean, a lot of, I mean, I lost family members much earlier than needed than than, than needed to be, and so uh, so you you get a you get a, a sense of at least where I'm coming from, so that so I can be very uh, uh, very transparent. And, uh, and I really developed a mother son bond with my grandma, and when I was in fourth grade, she passed away, and that totally devastated me. I just I didn't see it coming. Nobody let me know that she was, was sick and she was still at home. I thought everything was fine and she passed away. And a week after she passed away, my mother landed in the hospital with a, a, a congestive heart failure and had open heart surgery. And after that, she never came home again. She, for the next two years, she was in hospital and nursing homes and then she passed away uh, after having both her legs amputated and some other operations, uh, her kidneys finally gave out when I was in sixth grade. And uh, then I was very fortunate to have been raised by my aunt who became my guardian and took care of me. Uh, and I was able to do all the things that I wanted to do instead of becoming some kind of bad kid you know a lot of uh, 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 there's the story that a lot of kids that have a tough childhood sometimes they'll go and do do a lot of bad things and do bad in school and that kind of stuff uh, but the other side of that is someone that becomes almost like an overachiever and just tries to do everything and that was me I was uh, a part of a ton of different organizations and uh, from the Boy Scouts of America to plays and I'm a fast forward to my little football and, clip uh, just because uh, I'm uh, by the end of <laughs> the, uh, my high school I was about 240 pounds so I worked out all the time being a varsity athlete but with my slow ass I running was having all these issues and I remember it was one football game where I had bronchitis I was actually playing football while I had this bronchitis which was just that was one of the craziest things that I did. I, I don't even, I just remember feeling so terrible being out there trying to play football and it was just, it was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and, and you can see here this, <laughs> how big I was, you know, I was a, a played offensive line. I was a, as an offensive uh, tackle or offensive guard, uh, depending on the years that I played. But my real love all throughout junior high, high school, and even elementary school was music. And I played trombone. I started playing trombone when I was, I was in the fifth grade. And uh, when it came time to decide what I wanted to do in college, I just knowing how much I really love music, I decided that that's what I wanted to pursue. I wanted to become a professional musician. And even though there were some music teachers that said, well, don't go to school just for performance. You have to do, you know, get a degree where you can fall back on something. So uh, get a music ed degree or something like that. But I was like, no, I want to I want to become a player. I want to really become a great player and then figure things out from there. And so I 
got admitted into the College Conservatory of Music, University of Cincinnati, and I went there and it was one of the most rigorous academic programs in any I and within six forward. months, I lost uh, over 100 pounds, and I noticed that I didn't need to take the medications anymore. So I stopped taking the pharmaceutical medications that I'd taken since I was seven years old. I saw it happen right before my eyes, just looking in the mirror. It was just, I, I was just transforming into, uh, into what looked like somebody else. And that's what a lot of people said, that people that had went to high school with me or that knew me before, uh, they thought I looked uh, 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 you know, so much different. So around this time, you know, I Yeah, so that's, uh, so that's that, you know. But, uh, so that's, so that's what well, you wanted to know why I do it. That, that's why I do it. <laughs> so I just, you know, I'm, I'm just happy to be here because I don't think I wouldn't have lasted going the route that I was going. You know, there's not a whole lot of pictures that I have where I was really at my heaviest because I, I stopped. I mean, that before I started practicing the diet, I mean, I'd stopped looking in the mirror. I mean, I, would, I, I, just, I just was consciously ignorant, just like I ain't looking in the mirror. All I'm going to do is, uh, you know, I'm an artist, I'm a musician, and so I'm just like, man, I'm just going to practice and try to become the best musician I can and, but, and just eat whatever I feel like, you know, I just ate like crazy, you know, and I, I gained about 20 pounds in, uh, in a handful of, of days when I, was, uh, when, I was in co when I first went to college as a freshman, and that was right before I uh, learned about the mucus diet, and uh, so... So I, I, I can still remember how things felt in, in back then, and, and, and it's like, you know, I go through, there's ups and downs on this path, and, and, uh, and, and there's definitely downs, you know, and there's not a, it's not a cakewalk at all, uh, but I, I'd rather be here than, than where I was going. Uh, and where I would be if I would even still be here. I mean, I, I had a theory that I, w I would have been one of them statistics of somebody that probably would have had a stroke when I was, uh, you know, my early 30s or something, late 20s. You know, they're starting to see that with some of my peers. You know, folks my age are already starting to have heart attacks and, st and strokes and, and other things like that. And so I was a great candidate for that. And, uh, and I'm glad that I, you know, kind of, uh, you know, just you know, I'm glad I found the Mucus Diet Healing System. This was, you know, it's it's, it's a whole it's a whole different thing. You know, I'm glad because I'm glad I didn't that I didn't find raw foodism first. A lot of the people I work with they learned about raw foodism and fruitarianism first, and then learned about Arnold Harris' work. I'm I'm eternally grateful for having come into this thing from the ground up with Professor Arnold Eric's Mucus Diet Healing System uh, would have been totally different. I mean, I wouldn't have even took it, I wouldn't have taken the raw thing seriously, not, not in 2002, uh, if somebody would have came talking about all this like, okay, all you, uh, and, and been real strict with no transition recommendation, if they just been, okay, you gotta eat all fruit, or you eat, you know, eat this, or been real strict on the organic and all that kind of stuff, that would turned me off, I wouldn't even, took it seriously, but the transition diet along with, the, with a breakdown, you know, the philosophy that Eric throws in there, uh, that, that did the trick. That was like, I can, I can do this. Cause I'd actually already tried to, uh, it, the desire to get off of meat was there. Cause I'd started doing, uh, I'd studied Parahansa Yogananda and I was, I had, you know, was a member of the fellowship you know, I'd get all the, the yoga teachings and stuff. And, and so I had the desire to get off of meat, but I couldn't because all they said was just don't eat these things. Uh, and so I would try to go periods without eating them, but I would always, you know, I'd end up feeling guilty because I would then eat it. And um, once the mucus diet came into my life, then it was like, okay, transition, enemas, short-term fasting, system, you know, systematic, putting it all together as a system, and that that was the uh, that was the changing, uh, changing the guards there. That was the the uh, the ultimate saving grace there. So, so anyway, I think uh, I think it's about that time. You know, these these always always think that I'm a kind of uh, you know I'm a you know be <laughs> you know have a have a short short video. You know, I'll just do a short you know short short video, and they they always. Uh, 
you know, we, we get to going and they take a little bit longer. But uh, but um, when I'm, you know, when I'm getting good questions, I like to, you know, I really like to get in there and, and uh, you know, and try to address all the all your all the questions that are out there. So. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, de- definitely take a look down below at the links. Like I said, I've, we've opened up Early Bird. If you still want to get access to the Mucus's Diet Healing System e-course with the, uh, with the Early Bird status, I opened that up uh, for a very short period of time. So I would, if you want it, I would go ahead and do it, do it today because uh, the Early Bird will be shut down very soon, per, per maybe... Uh, very soon, so I wouldn't even just, uh, if you want to do it, just go ahead and do it. If for some reason you can't at the moment, but you really want to, then uh, shoot me an email, and or send, a, or if you're on the Mucus Free Life website, go to contact and just say, you know, you, you want to do the early bird, but maybe you don't got the finance today, but you, you're getting a check at some point, you know, and so just, if you want to reserve the spot, I will do that, but uh, if you do it today, uh, or, you know, very soon, but uh, yeah, the early bird opportunity is gonna be gonna be going here very very soon. So um, what else? And of course, we've been talking about mucus diet healing system. That's what you what you uh, want to check out. And uh, and it's you know Arnold Eric's work is is very serious. You know, I try to just uh, you know I th- to me any all of the important books of history have annotated versions whether it be the bible the bhagavad gita uh the great pieces of literature and all the shakespeare's work uh, uh you, you can find annotated versions of all of those books and so i thought if any historical document needed to have an annotated version uh arnold Eric's mucus diet healing system definitely deserves a uh, an annotated version so that's uh that's where that inspiration for that came from in part so so I want to thank you guys uh, for, for plugging in and uh, uh, as always you know just just stick to stick to the transition it's, it's all about it's all about the transition all about you're know, trying to take things to uh, you know take things to the next level and so uh, until next time if you have any uh, uh, if you have any other questions there's the link to maybe get your question officially answered in, uh, in one of the future sessions. And so uh, we'll be back here next Thursday. Then after that, I'm kind of, you know, I'm reevaluating everything. You know, I, I committed to doing four of these this month. And so uh, you know, I'll, I'll take a look at everything and then I'll, I might commit to another four of them. And, and we'll see how it goes. You know, if people are really find these videos uh, good and they're sharing them and they like them and stuff, you know, I'll keep, uh, you know, I'll keep this going and, and kind of expand it. And so, so I really do uh, appreciate all of you for plugging in. Thank you so much for, uh, for all the support and just all and the interest. And I mean, we are the ones that's, that's really uh, changing this world for, for the better. Uh, and. Uh, and, and, it, it, and we need we need us, <laughs> you know. The, the the earth needs us doing what we're doing, and uh, you know we don't have to be flashy. We don't have to be in people's faces. You know we don't have to be mean to people. We just have to do what we do, and just by example. You know, lead, I was always taught lead by example. Just that was the the foundation of my of a lot of my education in you know in the earlier years, and uh, and that's. And that's that's what we got to do, you know. Is just just live this thing, and uh, and and other people, the the people that are meant to get it are are gonna get it. And uh, so so yeah. So again, I thank you so much. And until next time, peace, love, and breath.
Alright, my man, what exactly is this thing right here? I hear you, what's up, bro? What, what exactly is that thing down there? What is it? Yeah. It's a cask. Why is there a cask? Why is there a cask? Represent death. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> that's good enough for me. <laughs> Who has been with us for a long, long time, for over three decades? Somebody that we depended on, somebody whom we loved. I am talking about Mr. Food Pyramid, ladies and gentlemen. Born in 1974, Mr. Food Pyramid has made a wonderful contribution to physiological enslavement everywhere. In an age of incivility, turmoil, death, murder, destruction, and disease, Mr. Food Pyramid has helped combat us in our ignorance. In the 1960s, we chanted, we shall overcome by any means necessary. But ladies and gentlemen, we are still servants to a wicked master who revels in our suffering. Mr. Food Pyramid told us that it is okay to eat a piece of chicken. Go ahead and eat that fish and that hot dog and that cheese. Go ahead and eat that steak, brother. Would you like fries with that tub? He was such a good friend. He always made us feel good about ourselves and our diets. Mr. Food Pyramid will surely be missed. So today we bury Mr. Food Pyramid and may he rest in peace. In pieces. Nature's wealth, good.